Hello, good evening, friends. Uh, welcome to this session of 50 important ENT questions. And uh, the questions are for the NEED PG and the INICT. And I welcome you all on behalf of Dr. Tutorials to this uh, evening of uh, revision, intensive revision on the basis of these 50 questions. And I hope that all of you, after the end of this session, you will feel that a lot of major points of ENT have been revised. So let us start with these questions. If you have any question uh, relevant to the, the topic being discussed, you may email me. I will share my email ID at the end or you can come to Telegram group. I will share the link also. You can post the queries over there. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Now the first question, which of the following is not part of Bent and Kuhn major criteria to diagnose Allergic fungal rhinosinusitis. AFRS is a very important topic for the need PG and INICT both. Bent and Cohen criteria. Now there are two type of criteria. One are major criteria, other are minor criteria. First of all, let us look at the choices. The first choice is positive fungal culture. The second choice is CT scan shows double density shadows. Type 1 allergic reaction it is. And the nasal polyposis. Let me tell you the answer at the outset. The answer is A you should be able to demonstrate the fungus on the staining that is sufficient. You should not have the fungus culture positive to make a diagnosis of the allergic fungal rhinosinusitis. Let us look at the Bent and Cohen criteria, important question. The major criteria are these. Number one, it is a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. Number two, there are nasal polyposis, but these polypi are full of fungal debris. So, they are not homogeneous, they are characteristically heterogeneous opacities or double density shadows on CT scan and they look like this. Now, this is a visual question of your exam also. So, look at this question, look at this visual question, it's a CT scan of the paranasal sinuses and you are seeing this shadow over here. This shadow is actually double density shadow, it is nasal polyposis, but the polypi are full of the fungus, so they give rise to heterogeneous or double density uh, shadows on the CT scan, okay. So, this is one of the major criteria. What are the other major criteria? Other major criteria is that in the nasal mucus, which is very thick and which has got, you know, uh, eosinophils into it, you should be able to demonstrate that it is eosinophilic mucin, okay, and the positive fungal stain, not culture. The culture is a minor criteria, but the question asks is what is the major criteria of the Benton Kuhn to diagnose the case of allergic fungal rhinosinusitis? Am I clear? Fine. So, the answer of this question is the A, the which of the following is not part of Benton Kuhn major criteria, major. Culture is not a major criteria, culture is a minor criteria and once again I must reiterate, please do revise the topic of allergic fungal rhinosinusitis and look at this radiology question once again. The CT scan of the sinuses shows double density shadows or the heterogeneous shadows which is typical of allergic fungal rhinosinusitis, okay. Now let us go to the next question. A patient of suspected sinusitis has undergone CT scan of the sinuses uh, which has got coronal cut and 5 millimeter cuts and CT scan has shown one unusual cell which is marked with the arrow. Now, please look at this cell. This, this cell which is within the male turbinate. Now, please see which cell he is talking about. This particular cell. This one. Let me label it for you. This, this cell. Okay. I am labeled that with the yellow color. But now, look at this one. Now, where are we? This is the inferior turbinate. Inferior turbinate. This is the middle turbinate, middle turbinate. Within the middle turbinate, there is a cell called concha bullosa, concha bullosa. The answer of this question is concha bullosa, okay. Now, look at the question once again. He is asking, there are unusual cells and what is the name of the unusual cell? The name of the unusual cell is concha bullosa, concha bullosa. The name of the unusual cell is concha bullosa, beta. Okay, why not do one thing? There are five cells of the ethmoid bone which are important for your exam, beta. Okay, everybody. Now, ethmoid bone. Where is ethmoid bone? One quick revision, beta. Everybody get into sync with a with a very intense high power revision of ENT major points for your upcoming INICT and the NEET PG exam, beta. Okay. Now, please see. This is your ethmoid. Ethmoid bone is a single bone in your body between the two orbits, beta. Okay. There are two halves of the ethmoid bone and these two halves have got some cell which are called ethmoid cells. They are the ethmoid cells. So, there is a single bone in the body 
between the two orbits and that contains the ethmoid air cells. Okay. In the in the upper part of the ethmoid, there is a something called cribriform plate. Beta. Cribriform plate is the part of ethmoid bone. And on top of that lies what? Brain. Beta. Brain. Am I clear? Brain. Okay. Now, these ethmoid air cells are like anterior group, posterior group. Anterior are 2 to 8 in number. And 2 anterior ethmoid air cells are constant cell. So, 5 cells are important for you from ethmoid. 2 are constant mean everybody has it. You have it. I have it. Three cells are there in some people. It's an anatomical variation. Let us see them one by one. So, five ethmoid cells to memorize. Two are constant and three are variations. Beta. First of all, let us revise the constant cell. The first constant cell is, everybody speak with me. Number one, Bulla ethmoidalis. Need PG question. Beta. Bulla ethmoidalis is constant. Yes. The main thing is, it's largest anterior ethmoid air cell. Largest constant and largest anterior ethmoid air cell is bulla ethmoidalis. If you ever get this question in your exam in NEET PG INICT, if they show you this is this is orbit beta, this is your orbit orbit, and if they show you a very big cell in between the two orbit kind of area, it is bulla ethmoidal. Largest cell of the anterior ethmoid group which everybody has is bulla ethmoidalis beta. Am I clear beta bulla ethmoidalis? Anybody which is this M sinus beta? What is M? Maxillary sinus. Everybody speak with me. Please don't think it's a it's an online virtual class. Imagine you and me are sitting in the same room sitting and discussing things together as friends do. Not faculty student kind of thing. As, as a friend is discussing with other friend and we are together revising it. So speak with me. What is this B? B indicates what? Brain, beta. Brain. Very good. Brain. Okay. What is this IT? Yes, it is inferior turbinate, my dear friend. It's inferior turbinate. Okay. Fine. Wonderful. Now, agarnezai. Agarnezai is constant cell. Everybody has it. You have it. I have it. And one important point about agarnezai is it is the anterior most anterior ethmoid air cell. It is the most anterior cell of the ethmoid group is agarnezai, beta. Agarnezai, in, if you know agar, A double G E R. If you know Hindi, little bit Hindi, A double G E means Aage. Aage means most anterior, beta. Never this question will go wrong, beta. A double G E R, A double G, little bit of Hindi, Aage. Aage means most anterior, beta. Okay? So, agarnezai is most anterior cell, beta. Okay? Fine. Now, agarnezai over here, beta. Now, this is an axial section. Everybody, what is this O? Everybody, what is this O? O for orbit. What is this E? Ethmoid bone is a single bone between two orbits. Beta. Am I clear, beta? Fine. Can you see one cell, this cell, which is the most anterior cell, beta? And that cell is called agarnezai, beta. In the axial section, if they indicate one cell, which is the most anterior cell, mark it as agarnezai cell. Okay? So, these two cells are constant, beta. Let us do three variable cell. Three vari everybody doesn't have it. It's anatomical variation, some special cell. The first variable cell is ONOD cell. ONOD. ONOD cell lies close to optic nerve. Lies close to optic nerve. You will say, say Rajiv, how to remember it? ONOD. What is ONOD? O N O D I. What is the first two letters? O mane optic. N mane nerve. Optic nerve. Any cell lying close to optic nerve will be called ONOD cell, beta. ONOD cell. Everybody clear? ONOD cell. Tell me in the chat box, are you revising with me? Yes or no? Everybody, right? Are you revising with me or no? Yes or no? Okay, ONOD cell, beta. ONOD. Next is Heller cell, beta. Heller. Heller cell lies in the orbital floor, beta. Heller cell lies in the orbital floor. In the, you know, ethmoid is between the two orbits. If the cell goes in the orbital floor, it is called Heller cell, beta. And last one, the one you just saw on the screen, Please see again Heller cell over here. Beta. Everybody tell me what is this O? O for orbit, beta. O, o for orbit. Very good, very good. Wonderful. Let us spend these two cells. Forget everything, beta. Just right now, let us focus on to revise that. Let us revise the major points of ENT together as friends do, not faculty student, beta. Okay, fine. Can you see this cell, beta? Let me label it for you. This, this orange cell, beta. This orange cell will be what is the Heller cell beta. And now I know, if they point any cell in the floor of orbit, I am going to mark it as a Heller cell beta, Heller cell. The third variable cell is Concabulosa. Concabulosa, Concabulosa is pneumatized middle turbinate beta. Concabulosa is pneumatized middle turbinate. So, within the middle turbinate, if there is a cell, that is called Concabulosa. And one additional point is, Concabulosa is most common variation beta. Out of the three variation, the three variations are Heller cell, ONOD cell, Concabulosa. Concabulosa is the most common variation, beta. Most common variation. Wonderful. 
So this is called the bullet. Everybody, now speak with me, beta. What is O? O for orbit. Which is this bone here? The ethmoid bone between two orbits, beta. Okay, ethmoid bone is between two orbits. What is this turbinate? Inferior turbinate, beta. What is this turbinate? Yes, middle turbinate. In the middle turbinate, there is a big cell and this cell is called concha bullosa, beta. Everybody, are you sure about it now? Yes or no in the chat box, beta. Are you sure about it or not? If I appoint this thing, now this arrow over here, would you be able to tell yes or no? Is it concha bullosa? Yes or no, beta. Yes, this session will be used for FMG also, beta. Keep revising, beta. Keep revising. Don't, don't, exams are merging, beta. Exams are merging. Keep revising with me, okay? Are you able to tell this cell, beta, this is conca bulloza? Yes or no in the chat box, beta. Okay? Conca bulloza. Okay? Now, very famous question, beta. In which of the clinical situation you would see the given finding in the image, beta? Now, this is classical thing is called target sign or hello sign or double hello sign beta so target sign or hello sign or double hello sign you know this is the very important question and lot of people will mark csf rhinorrhea and that's a wrong answer beta it is not seen in every csf rhinorrhea my dear friends it is only seen in in traumatic csf leak c is the correct answer beta traumatic csf leak is a blood mix csf beta in blood mix CSF, when that, when that, you know, not A, beta, not A, everybody, that's what, very good. Let us do mistakes now, beta. Never get discouraged by the mistakes you do. You are doing mistake. I'm glad, beta, you are writing A. In the exam, you would utilize this information for not just ENT, for the other subject also, that I'm going to read all the four choices carefully and then mark the answer as C, beta. I'm glad that you're making this this you know question wrong over here because this will remind you in the exam, oh, I'm not going to make silly mistake in the exam. Once you read traumatic CSF leak, yes, it is C answer, beta. Very good. Okay. So, this target sign or hello sign or double hello sign is seen on filter paper and it is positive in traumatic CSF leak, my dear friends. In which leaf oat fractures you see traumatic CSF leak? Leaf oat 1, or leaf oat 2 or leaf oat 3, anybody? Leaf oat 2 and leaf oat 3 fracture. Leaf oat 1 does not lead to CSF rhinorrhea because leaf oat 1 doesn't pass from the skull base. Beta. Leaf oat 2 and leaf oat 3 are linked with the CSF rhinorrhea. Beta. I'm going to CSF rhinorrhea. Wonderful. Okay. Fine. Chalo. Let us go further. Most common site of CSF rhinorrhea, if this question come, please mark the answer as cribriform plate. Overall, most common site is cribriform plate. You just saw that. It's a part of which bone? Speak up with me. Which bone, beta? Write down the chat box. Which bone? Ethmoid bone, beta. Ethmoid bone. Very good, Saurav. Type 2 and type 3, beta. Type 1, CSF, type 1, leaf oat is not linked with CSF rhinorrhea. Perfect. Now, but if the question says most common site of traumatic CSF leak, beta, traumatic, then please do not write cribriform plate, then write fovea ethmoidalis. It is the roof of ethmoid bone. Beta. So, two questions. Most common site of CSF rhinorrhea is cribriform plate. Overall, all causes combined, but particularly traumatic CSF leak is asked. Then you mark fovea ethmoidalis or roof of ethmoid. Beta. Very good, sort of. Everybody, everybody get active and write in the chat box. Let the chat box be booming with the answers, beta. Maybe they are wrong, but I am not here to assess you. I am here to assist you. Don't be ashamed. Write wrong answer. Every wrong answer is the beginning of the right answer in the exam day, beta. So that's not, not a problem, okay? But answer everyone, okay? Best confirmatory test for CS rhinorrhea is beta 2 transferrin estimation, beta. Beta 2 transfer estimation, this is the gold standard test, beta, okay? Now, best radiological investigation is what? HRCT skull base. HRCT skull base, beta. Do we use nasal endoscopy to find the site of leak? Yes. Which dye we inject in the CSF? The answer is intrathecal. Intrathecal fluorescent dye injection, beta. Which dye? Intrathecal fluorescent dye injection will give which color to the CSF? Green color to CSF, beta. After injecting the lumbar puncture, through lumbar puncture, you inject this dye and, and you will be going over there where into the CSF, you give the green color and see, you will be seeing the endoscopically the green color leaking and you will find the site of leak. Beta. Can you tell me what is the treatment of choice of CSF rhinorrhea? The treatment of choice of CSF rhinorrhea is conservative treatment. Please do not write any fancy surgery. Lot of leaks stop on their own, beta. Treatment is conservative treatment. The most 
best test for diagnosis is beta 2 transferrin best radiological investigation is hrct skull base and you should always keep in mind the treatment is not aggressive surgery right in the beginning to begin with conservative treatment with bed rest and antibiotic for 7 to 10 days better very good so don't forget intrathecal fluorescent dye injection this may be a new question for the exam better let us discuss the next question of nose better resident of tamil nadu has presented to ENT OPD with recurrent nasal bleeding and nasal obstruction. The picture is given in the image, beta. Okay. Which of the following is not applicable statement in this condition? First of all, resident of Tamil Nadu in ENT indicates a diagnosis of rhinosporidiosis. My dear friends, rhinosporidiosis. It is caused by which organism? Rhinosporidium sebrae. It is, a, it is not a fungus. It is aquatic protozoa. Aquatic means it is found in the pond's water, beta. In the villages where the ponds are used for bathing. So, pond water has got this uh, aquatic protozoa. When you jump in the pond, this, this protozoa enter your nose, your mouth, your, you know, conjunctiva and genital mucosa also. So, lesion most commonly are found in the, in the nose, then but in the eyes, conjunctiva, oral cavity and genital mucosa also, beta. Okay, fine. The treatment of choice of rhinosporidiosis is surgical excision with the cautery of the base beta. Burn the base because it's a high chance there can be recurrence beta. Okay. So, treatment is surgical excision with the cautery of base followed by Dapson. Dapson is given after surgery to prevent recurrence beta. Which drug is used for the, which drug is used for the, which drug is used for the, which drug? Which drug is used for the rhino? Which drug is used for the rhinosporidiosis, beta? Rhinosporidiosis. How to remember Dapson? Rhinosporidiosis, beta. D for Dapson, beta. Why I am telling you there is another similar disease which is sounding similar. Then you know what that is called rhinoscleroma. In rhinoscleroma, we use some other drug called streptomycin and tetracycline. Rhinoscleroma has got no D, beta. Rhinosporidiosis D, D for Dapson, beta. Okay. Let us see the answer of this question, beta. Let us see the answer of this question. Which of the following is not applicable to rhinosporidiosis? It is caused by aquatic protozoa. Yes. It is Dapson is useful treatment. Yes. Russell bodies and Mikulis cells are not feature of rhinoscleroma. Are not feature of rhinosporidiosis. Rhinosporidiosis has got no such feature. Rhi they are the feature of rhinoscleroma or woody nose, beta. I repeat, Russell bodies and Mikulis cell are histopathological feature of rhinoscleroma, not this condition rhinosporidiosis, beta. And can there be similar lesion in oral cavity genital mucosa? Yes. The answer to this question is C, beta. C. Very good. Very good, Sarah. Absolutely great, beta. C. Let's one, let us see. The Russell bodies and Mikulis cell are histopathological feature of rhinoscleroma, beta. Okay. Which drug is used, beta, in rhinoscleroma? Drug used for rhinoscleroma is drug used for rhinoscleroma is the tetracycline and streptomycin beta. Rhinoscleroma also called as woody nose and the drug uses tetracycline and streptomycin beta. So, rhinoscleroma, the two things to remember is that that can, that the drug of choice is tetra and strepto. Depson is used for rhinosporidiosis. Rhinosporidiosis is called a D, D for Depson beta. Now, I'm Depson. Everybody, please look at me. The Russell bodies and Mikulis cell are histopathological feature of rhinoscleroma. Okay, fine. Identify the surgical line given in the image. Every such line is not Ongren line, beta. This is a typical picture of Weber Ferguson incision, beta. You will say, Rajiv, how to really, you know, see Weber Ferguson different from Ongren line, beta? Any lip splitting incision, beta. Any lip splitting incision, you can see only one incision in ENT which cuts the lip midway is a Weber Ferguson incision, and this incision is used for total maxillectomy. Better. Which, which incision is this incision? Weber Ferguson incision, and how to identify it? It's a lip cutting incision. Better. And what is the indication major is the surgery is called a total maxillectomy. Better. Let us see the other things also. Better. So, Weber Ferguson, everybody clear? This is a lip splitting incision. Better. Now, Ongren line is a star question of your paper, visual question. Ongren line is from medial canthus to the angle of mandible. This is not for surgery. It is to assess the prognosis of cancer of maxillary sinus. Any cancer above this line 
will have a poor prognosis because of early orbital involvement. I think everybody knows that angular line is not for surgeries for prognosis of which cancer? Cancer of maxillary sinus. What is the extent from medial canthus to the angle of mandible? Any cancer of maxillary sinus above this line will have poor prognosis due to early orbital involvement. Beta. What is the other thing? Beta? Moore's incision. Beta. Moore's incision. This incision is used for lateral rhinotomy. Lateral rhinotomy. Beta. Can you see? The nose is being opened from side. Beta. Lateral rhinotomy. Okay. When do you do this surgery, this approach, better? Let it not me. This is used to conduct medial maxillectomy. This approach, let it not me approach, is used for which surgery? Medial maxillectomy. What is the indication of medial maxillectomy? Ringed's tumor. Lot of question here, but on the screen right now. Ringet's tumor is also called as inverted papilloma of nose. Very good. Ringet's tumor is Ringet's tumor is also called as inverted papilloma of nose. Everybody, Ringet's tumor also called inverted papilloma of nose. It's an aggressive tumor, so you have to remove some part of the lateral wall of nose also. Why? Because site of origin of Ringet's tumor is lateral wall of nose. Everybody look at me, beta. Lateral wall of nose is equal to medial wall of maxilla. So, what is the name of surgery? Medial maxillectomy. What is the approach for the surgery? Lateral rhinotomy. What is the name of incision used for lateral rhinotomy? Moore's incision. What is the indication of medial maxillectomy in ENT? Is the inverted papilloma of nose, also called as Ringet's tumor. Beta. Okay? Now, let us go to the Fourth choice, but a Glux or Ensign incision. This is a U-shaped incision. This is used for total laryngectomy in a patient of cancer larynx. But any U-shaped incision in the neck, it's a neck incision. This is used for total laryngectomy. Total laryngectomy. But total laryngectomy. Am I clear, but fine. Total laryngectomy. Let us go to the next very possible question, but the 29-year-old COVID-19 RT-PCR positive patient presents to emergency in a critical state with deranged vital. COVID-19 has to come some other way. The examination shows a blackish necrotic debris in the nasal cavity with the necrosis of skin of the external nose. Black, black, black. I'm 100% I'm sure you know it. It's a case of mucormycosis. Who can forget the delta strain? Okay, mucormycosis, beta. mucormycosis and the most important thing to remember about it is it can be asked in three different clinical scenarios. Nowadays, number one, COVID-19 positive patient. Number two, it is, number two, it is the young diabetic patient. Number two, it's a young diabetic patient, beta, okay. And number three, it will be diabetic ketoacidosis patient, beta. And finally, HIV positive patient. So, once again, let me reiterate. Rather than three, four scenarios into which they can ask it. They can ask you in COVID-19 patient. They can ask you young, di young diabetic with the diabetic ketoacidosis features or HIV positive individual. Something black in the nose, something black around the nose in this clinical background is 100% mucormycosis and the treatment is. Now, let us see how we do some mistakes, beta. The answer is, the answer is the liposomal amphotericin B plus debridement beta. But the other choices are also partially correct. Amphotericin B, partially correct. Debridement, partially correct. Liposomal amphotericin B, partially correct. But what is the best answer beta? In the paper, mark the best answer. Paper says, not that other choices are incorrect. They say, mark the best answer beta over there. Mark the best response. They are very correct diplomatically. They are not saying other choices are incorrect. They may be partially correct beta. So, my pledge today is, Howsoever simple the question may be, I am going to read all the four choices carefully. This is your, look at this choice, beta. as you go down, the choice is turning better, 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 beta. okay, very good, beta. very good. So, young diabetic patient, ketoacidosis patient, HIV positive patient, COVID-19 patient with blackish thing in the nose, around the nose is mucormycosis. Beta. Answer this question is D, beta. liposomal amphotericin B and debridement. Mucormycosis can always not be black, beta. In the beginning, there is congestion, arrhythma of the cheek. There may be some ocular involvement which leads to diplopia or which lead to blurring of vision or there can be, you know, other symptoms like blood stain, nasal discharge in the beginning. The black color comes in a later stage when ischemic necrosis starts, beta. Very importantly, what are the investigations which we do in a patient of mucormycosis? We do nasal endoscopy. Why? We want to take the KY smear, beta. 
it's a histopathological diagnosis please understand beta we have to take a biopsy kind of thing not a, not just a minimal secretion the mold is everywhere it's a commensal you can have mold in your nose no not a problem i have to take a tissue diagnosis beta it is not a microbiological diagnosis only it's histopathological diagnosis beta that can be a question in your exam beta you have to prove the fungus is within the tissues not on the surface of the mucosa of the nose beta so it's a histopathological uh, diagnosis you prove that fungus is there you can ask a fungal culture which doesn't really work and radiology is the mainstay again now radiology the best radiological investigation is contrast mri beta you have to do the mri of the sinuses along with the orbit beta orbit is the neighbor which is getting involved what is the classical mri sign beta contrast mri shows black turbinate sign new question possible black turbinate sign just see over here beta everything is black beta just see over here just compare these two beta this is normal turbinate this is the disease turbinate can you see black turbinate inferior turbinate is looking black this is called black turbinate sign seen on the contrast mri in a case of mucormycosis beta okay fine wonderful beta this is an important question everybody just keep in mind black turbinate sign beta okay so drug of choice already clear now next question one day old child one day old child presented with respiratory distress cyanosis which improves on crying beta this is an absolute clue of coanal atresia beta blue baby turns pink on crying is 100% coanal atresia question for your paper beta blue baby cyanotic baby turning pink on crying is 100% clue for the coanal atresia this is a case of coanal atresia and the guy doctor has done endoscopy doctor has done the ct scan and they have shown you the image like this beta can you see can you see this the coana both side are blocked beta the coana what is coana posterior opening of nasal cavity now please see over here also the coana is blocked beta now one important question for your exam bilateral complete coanal atresia is a neonatal emergency sara yes useful for fmg also please hear it beta bilateral complete coanal atresia is a neonatal airway emergency why because neonates are obligatory nasal breathers this is a possible question bilateral complete coanal atresia is a neonatal airway emergency why because the neonates are obligatory nasal breathers beta okay why this coanal atresia happens beta because of the persistence of bucco nasal membrane if it is bilateral and complete it's a serious airway emergency beta okay what you do immediately you have to put something in the mouth of the baby to keep it open you put a wide bore nipple in child's mouth to keep it open because when he keeps the mouth open the air goes inside the lungs and the baby is fine beta this technique is called mcgowan's technique very very possible question mcgowan technique is putting wide bore nipple or oropharyngeal airway in the child's mouth so that it is open then you do the tracheostomy but the recanalization surgery is done is done after one year of age let us let the child grow up beta let the child grow up then only you plan the surgery at the one at one year of age beta okay let us see this question which is not true about coronary atresia it is due to persistence of bucco nasal membrane correct bilateral has respiratory difficulty yes you cannot pass catheter from nose to pharynx yes recanalization is done at birth wrong it done at one year or later beta one year or later the answer to this question is d beta d everybody clear beta fine okay mukul we will have to keep this uh, nipple for some hours and after that we do tracheostomy beta it's not that they are going to convert to you know other breathing pattern but you need tracheostomy bilateral complete coronary atresia immediate management is put a white bore nipple after some time you do tracheostomy one or two hours and then at one year you 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 just go for the uh, recanalization sur surgery mitomycin c when you do the recanalization when you make a hole again apply the mitomycin c over there very good point beta very good point uh, shared by bharat that you know when you apply the mitomycin c in the freshly made new hole mitomycin c prevents the restenosis beta so mitomycin c is a possible question whenever you want to keep any cavity hole patent apply the mitomycin c beta wonderful okay bache fine let us see the next question now beta everybody are you there with me are you in, are you are you enjoying the revision or not beta let us let us really you know uh, akhil they will be able to survive one, one year tracheostomy beta fine are you are you able to actively revise with me enjoying it i hope i'm not making your evening very laborious beta okay 
the only attempt is that you make sure you revise certain important point of your notes better. Okay, very good. Seven-year-old child while playing fell down. Trauma history there. He has developed nasal blockage on both sides. Nasal blockage on both sides. And there is swelling around the nose. Very good. This swelling around the nose. Internal examination is shown in the image. This is a case of septal hematoma. Straightforward need PG question. Septal hematoma history is there. You should treat it, aspirate it immediately. Better. The treatment is aspiration of septal swelling. Better. This is a case of septal hematoma. The trauma is there in this patient. And you must take care that patient should not we have this hematoma for many many hours and days because this septal hematoma can get infected and can lead to septal abscess and septal perforation. So we don't want septal abscess, septal perforation. So you must aspirate this septal hematoma urgently. Beta. Very good, very good. Beta. Septal hematoma is clear. Beta. Okay, okay. How, how would you do it? The trauma history is there. Trauma history is there and then there is a bilateral bilateral nasal swelling. And please do remember bilateral is a key word here. Beta. Bilateral means it's a septal hematoma because he says he has developed nasal blockage on both sides, both sides. Okay, fine. Now, this is septal hematoma and it is on both sides. This is on both sides. Here also. So, bilateral nasal blockage and the nasal swelling after trauma is 100% clue for septal hematoma and mark the answer as aspiration of septal swelling. Okay. Next one, better. Next one. 18 year, 18 year old young male was hit with cricket bat on face two days ago, better. Two days ago. Two days have passed already. He has developed nasal swelling also, my dear friends. Swelling is also there. X ray is given in the image. Look at the X ray, better. If you look at the X ray, can you see X ray nasal bone? And you can see a very clear fracture of the bone over there. Now, please understand. Please understand. The nasal bone fracture question can come in two ways, better two way. Please say, if it is a fresh fracture, then you do immediate fracture reduction before edema starts. If like this kind of question come, if it is an old fracture, two day old fracture, and swelling is already mentioned, then you change the answer to wait for seven days and then do the fracture reduction, better. Fracture reduction after seven days. Better. This is the answer, better. Why? Swelling is there, better. I may I repeat the thing with you. If it is a fresh fracture and no swelling is mentioned, mark the answer as the answer A, beta, immediate fracture reduction. But if the question comes like this question, the two day old fracture, there is swelling of the nose, then the treatment is imme not immediate fracture, then wait for seven days for edema to subside and then do the fracture reduction. So the answer is fracture reduction after seven days, beta, seven days. Wonderful, beta. very good. Perfect, very good. Amazing. Next one. A patient with wide roomy nasal cavity with thick crust formation. Better. Bad smell from nose and hard smell. Anybody, what is the answer? Better? Can you tell me what is the answer? What is the answer? Better? What is the answer in this case? Atrophy rhinitis, rhinosporidosis, rhinosloma, rhinitis sicca. What is the answer? Better? Roomy crust, roomy cavity with crust formation. Bad smell from nose. The answer of this question is not A beta. That's why hard external nose is also there. The answer is rhinoscroma beta. This is the biggest mistake people do in the need PG. They get so, so happy reading the word. Oh, roomy nasal cavity. Oh, crust formation. Bad smell. 100% atrophic rhinitis. No, 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 no. This is not atrophic rhinitis. This is actually a case of rhinoscroma beta. Don't mark rhino, uh, atrophic rhinitis, please mark rhinoscleroma beta. This mistake will not do. Hard external nose beta, hard. Atrophic rhinitis never has hard external nose. Let me tell you two equations of ENT beta, which are surely going to help you in the exam. My favorite equation of ENT. Let me tell you two favorite equation of ENT for me beta. Number one, atrophic rhinitis question. The question look like atrophic rhinitis plus hard external nose. If in the atrophic rhinitis question like MCQ, the hard external nose written is equal to rhinoscleroma. Okay, rhinoscleroma. Okay, 
द सेकेंड इक्वेशन विच इज अनदर फेवरेट इक्वेशन फॉर मी इट इज इट इज क्विंजी लाइक क्वेश्चन प्लस नेक स्वेलिंग क्लोज टू एंगल ऑफ मैंडेबल क्विंजी लाइक क्वेश्चन द क्वेश्चन लुक लाइक क्विंजी क्विंजी नेवर एज एन नेक स्वेलिंग क्विंजी नेवर एज एन नेक स्वेलिंग क्विंजी प्लस नेक स्वेलिंग इज इक्वल टू पैराफेरेंजियल एप्सिस बेटा नो कंफ्यूजन क्रिस्टल क्लियर कॉन्सेप्ट विल हेल्प अस टेक द डिसीजन इन द एग्जाम क्विकर क्विकर बिकॉज इट्स एन एग्जाम ऑफ टाइम मैनेजमेंट आल्सो बेटा ओके ओके फाइन बेटा फाइन सो टू इक्वेशन नेवर फॉरगेट बेटा एट ट्रॉफी रेनाइटिस प्लस हार्ड सन नोज इक्वल टू राइनस क्रोमा एंड क्विंजी प्लस नेक स्वेलिंग क्लोज टू एंगल ऑफ मैंडेबल इज पैराफेरेंजियल एप्सिस बेटा डज इट हेल्प यू और नॉट tell me that are these two equation helpful for you or not beta okay this is going to solve lot of things for us beta do you know what quincy like question with next swelling given close to angle of mandible i am going to mark the answer of parapharyngeal abscess beta okay are these two equation making sense to you okay fine wonderful wonderful because they are the very commonly done mistake in the paper beta so we will not do this mistake i i invite you to do the mistakes now beta none of you is going to assess yourself on the basis of any grand test any mock test nothing everything is an opportunity for us to learn only one day matters the real exam day beta rest everything is is just to assist you to make sure that on the exam day you don't do blunders beta let us do silly mistakes now so that on the exam day we reminded that oh i have I'm, i generally do these mistakes i don't read the choice c and d and i do mistake like i mark out a and b because i am in a hurry in the exam i'll not be in a hurry beta okay fine one visual question for your paper beta pots puppy tumor please don't forget pots puppy tumor is other name of subperiosteal frontal abscess beta sub periosteal frontal abscess it's a complication of frontal sinusitis frontal sinusitis can lead to frontal osteomyelitis and that can lead to sub periosteal frontal abscess and that's called pots puppy tumor beta is a very important nose question beta everyone and one more thing please highlight over here merciful anosmia as somebody reminded me merciful anosmia is a feature of atrophic rhinitis beta atrophic rhinitis never has outside nose changes no external nose changes beta okay so merciful anosmia is a feature of atrophic rhinitis my dear friends very good very good let us start a talk question of pharynx now beta this was all about nose let us let me shift to the pharynx question now beta 6 year old child operated for adenotonsillectomy has developed c1 c2 subluxation post operatively unfortunately adlanto axial subluxation what is the possible diagnosis is grissel syndrome beta grissel syndrome answer is b beta grissel syndrome the c1 c2 vertebra got subluxated beta okay now why it happens beta position of patient during adenoidectomy or tonsillectomy is called rose position and you can see it is really too much of extension beta over extension of neck can lead to atlanto axial subluxation and that is a serious neurosurgical emergency called grissel syndrome beta immediately refer the patient call the neurosurgeon for attending to the patient and put a collar over there okay the collar is the most important quick thing you have to do okay fine now what are the other disease beta thorn wall disease is infection of nasopharyngeal bursa infection of nasopharyngeal bursa this is everybody has it's a embryological remnant okay otner syndrome is left atriomegaly let us revise more things causing left rln palsy okay left atriomegaly causing left rln palsy eagle syndrome is stylgia long styloid process touching ninth nerve is eagle syndrome beta how to remember eagle syndrome beta can you see beta eagle holding the snake with the claw beta the the claw of the eagle are long styloid process the snake is the ninth nerve beta long styloid process touching the ninth nerve causes throat pain referred to ear and that's called eagle syndrome or stylgia beta very good next question the pediatric and ent combined question two year old child presents to emergency with fever and respiratory distress the moment you hear this word beta respiratory distress think about emergency situation beta respiratory distress the child has drooling of saliva 
Mother says refusing feed since yesterday. The X-ray is given the picture, beta. This is X-ray, beta. The X-ray typically shows what widening of pre-vertebral shadow, beta. Widening of pre-vertebral shadow. This is a typical feature of acute retropharyngeal abscess, beta. Okay, please understand. Cervical spine is normal, beta. Because you are going to ask me, Rajiv, why it is not pre-vertebral abscess, beta? Why it is not pre-vertebral abscess, beta? Pre-vertebral abscess is due to TB of cervical spine, beta. TB of cervical spine. Okay, fine. TB of cervical spine leads to pre-vertebral abscess. So, in pre-vertebral abscess, cervical spine vertebra cannot be normal. And pre-vertebral abscess is a chronic problem. It would not be presenting like an acute emergency, beta. It's a tubercular abscess. It is slow to form, beta. And one more point. Pre-vertebral abscess, orthopedic problem, is more common in adults, beta. So, retropharyngeal abscess, the one you are seeing in the question right now, it's a pediatric airway emergency, beta. Okay? So, it, it has to be acute retropharyngeal abscess. Why it's not pre-vertebral? That is due to TB of the spine, pot spine, beta. Parapharyngeal will always have neck swelling out. There is no neck swelling, beta. The Quincy, peritonsular abscess, will have internal finding, remember? There will be, uvula will be shifted, Tonsil will be pushed medially, no, nothing that sort of given over here, beta. Okay? Retrophangal abscess will always come in a child of two year, beta. It's a pediatric airway emergency. Somebody asked, Mukul asked that, what is the difference between the rose position and barking dog position, beta? The, please understand, beta, rose position is super extension, beta. Please understand, there are three, three things over here. Look at me. There is, there is, what is this? Chest, neck, head. There are two joints, beta. Neck on the chest, head on the neck. Okay? In rose position, there are everything is extension, beta. Neck is extending on the chest, head is extended on the neck, beta. Okay, like this. But in the boisterous position or the barking dog position for dark laryngoscopy, what we do is we flex the neck on the chest, but we extend the head on the neck. Okay, I repeat, in rose position, both joints are extended. In rose position, there is extension of neck on the chest, there is extension of head on the neck. But in the Boisterous position or the barking dog position for dark laryngoscopy, there is flexion of neck on the chest and the flex extension of head on the neck. Is that clear, Bida? Fine. Okay. Now, let's do the next question, Bida. CT scan of 13 year old male patient with angiofibroma shows the tumor involving nasopharynx, nose, and occupying the pterygopalatine fossa. What is the Redkowski staging of this tumor, beta? It's a popular question of INICT coming up, beta. Redkowski is used by Ames big time, beta. So you should know that which stage it is, beta. Very simple. Now, this is difficult to be remembered. I know that. I, let me make it easy for you, beta. One, stage one, one, beta. One A to the nose, beta. Tumor start from where? Nasopharynx to nose. One B, sinuses. If any sinus is mentioned, it is one B, beta. If tumor goes to nose, 1A. Tumor goes to sinus also, 1B. Now, 2. Now, please understand, 2 is to be understood better. Please see. How to understand 2? Everybody, please see on the, over here. This is your, this is your nasopharynx. The tumor belongs to nasopharynx. This is your nose. This is your maxilla, which contains the maxillary sinus. Behind the maxilla, there is a fossa called a pterygopalatine fossa. And this is cheek, and cheek is actually infratemporal fossa, beta. infratemporal fossa, infratemporal fossa, infratemporal fossa. ITF means infratemporal fossa, infratemporal fossa. Okay, fossa. Okay. Now please see, the two has got three part, beta. two A, two B, and two C, beta. two A, two B, two C, beta. Okay. Now please see on the screen, everybody. See, tumor belongs to nose. If it goes to nose, 1A. If it goes to sinuses, 1B. Now, this side, beta. This is which fossa? Pterygopalatine fossa. If it is minimally invade pterygopalatine fossa, it is called 1A. If it is frankly involved pterygopalatine fossa, this is called 1B. And if it extends to infratemporal fossa, it is called 1C. What is infratemporal fossa? Cheek side, beta. Cheek side. Everybody, please see. If it is a minimal involvement of pterygopalatine fossa, it is 1A. Frank involvement, as in this question mentioned, is 1B. 2B, sorry. 
and if it goes to the infratemporal fossa 2C. Once again, 1A to the nose. Tumor belongs to nose or nasopharynx. Tumor belongs to nasopharynx. If it goes to nose, 1A. If it goes to sinuses, 1B. If it goes to minimal involvement of pterygobatian fossa behind the maxilla is 2A. Then frank involvement of pterygobatian fossa, 2B. But if it goes from pterygobatian fossa to infratemporal fossa, which is cheek side over here, it's 2C. Beta. And if it goes to the brain side, beta, brain side is stage 3. Beta. Okay, stage 1, stage 2, stage 3. So it's very easy. Sinus involvement mentioned, mark 1B. Beta. Pterygobatian fossa mentioned, mark 2B. Infratemporal fossa mentioned, mark 2C. Beta. They are the possible question of the AIMS, INICT. Beta. Okay, now, can you see? Look at this pterygobatian fossa, beta. Can you see over here, beta? Everybody look at this area, beta. Can you see over here? The tumor is pushing the posterior wall of maxilla forward, beta. And that is called, that is called what? That is called Hallman Miller sign, beta. Can you see over this area, everybody? Can you see in this area, everyone? Can you see in this area? Tumor is pushing the posterior wall of maxilla forward, and that is called Hallman Miller sign or enteral sign. This is seen on CT scan, beta. Now see over here, beta. Can you see the CCD? This is my maxillary sinus normal side beta. this is normal side this is disease side are they at the same position no i can see on the disease side the tumor has pushed the posterior wall of maxilla forward beta. this sign on ct scan is a radiology visual question posterior wall of maxilla has been pushed forward look at the red arrow and this sign is called hallman miller sign or enteral sign this is a typical feature of angiofibroma beta. is the radiological sign clear beta? Can you pick, pick it with the history over there? Okay, fine. Can you see the two sides are not at the same level, beta? Am I clear, beta? Fine. Okay, let's go further. All are applicable to juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma except. Now, hall memory sign on CT scan? Correct. Frog face deformity, yes. Proptosis. The tumor grows to orbit and that leads to proptosis and that is called frog face deformity, beta. Everybody clear? Everybody, are you clear about the Redkowski staging? Yes or no? Are you able to now understand Redkowski? Yes or no, beta? Okay. It, will you biopsy? Never, never, never. Biopsy is contraindicated. It's a highly vascular tumor, beta. Two tumors in ENT which are highly vascular are angiofibroma and glomus jugular. Angiofibroma of the nose nasopharynx, glomus jugular belongs to the ear, beta. Ear. Now, very important, both these, both these tumors, you never biopsy, beta. Let me tell you a simple way to crack this question, beta. Angiofibroma is seen in boys, beta. Glomus jugular is seen in females, beta. A young boy with nasal bleeding is angiofibroma question. A female patient with the pulsating thing in the ear is 100% glomus jugular question, beta. Let me make your life easy, beta. Clinical scenario can be answered very easily. Two vascular tumor in ENT. One in males, one in female. Young boys have got angiofibroma. Any young boy with nasal bleeding question is angiofibroma question. Don't over dissect the things and make it rare answer, beta. Never, never do that. Don't change the answer to rarer, rarer, and because they are asking you commoner things, beta. Glomus jugular, a lady with pulsatile tinnitus or bleeding mass in the ear. Something pulsating or bleeding in the ear of a female patient is glomus jugular, and nasal bleeding or nasal mass in a young boy is angiofibroma. And both of them, we have got biopsy contraindicated. Beta. And sphenobatan foramen is the site of origin. Beta. Yes, correct. Answer to this question is C. C, beta. Very good. Very good. Are you with me, beta? Mentally, are you with me? Everybody, are you with me mentally? Six year old child with history of mouth breathing, malocclusion of teeth, and conductive wearing loss due to glue ear. Glue ear, beta. Glue ear is a pr pr very prominent cause of. The glue ear is a very prominent linkage of the adenoid hypertrophy. But adenoid hypertrophy is more common in school age children and adenoid hypertrophy will lead to glue ear in children also. Better. So this is question, anytime you see a question of mouth breathing child, better. mouth breathing child, the child is having mouth breathing and the hearing loss. It's 100% question is of adenoid hypertrophy with, with what? With the glue ear. Better. I repeat. Anytime you see this question of mouth breathing child with the hearing loss, please make a straightforward diagnosis of adenoid hypertrophy with glue ear. Beta. And what is the best treatment for this patient? Will you do adenoid, dectomy, maringotomy, adenectomy with maringotomy, or the D choice, beta? 
एनोडेक्टमी विद मारिंगोटमी विद ग्रोमेड इंसर्शन येस डी इज द आंसर बेटा डिड यू नोटिस ऑन एज यू गो डाउन द आंसर स्टार्ट गेटिंग बेटर बेटर एंड बेटर बेटर ओके ग्रोमेट इंसर्शन ओके बेटा ग्रोमेट ग्लू नीड्स ग्रोमेट ग्रोमेट विल ओनली कम इन ग्लू ईयर ओके ग्लू ईयर इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज सीरस ओटाइटस मीडिया सीरस टाइटस मीडिया बेटा ग्लू ईयर ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज सीरस टाइटस मीडिया एवरीबडी इज ए क्लियर बेटा फाइन सो आंसर दिस क्वेश्चन इज डी बेटा डी गाइज ग्लू ईयर इन चिल्ड्रन इज ड्यू टू एडिनो हाइपोट्रॉफी बट इफ एन एडल्ट पेशेंट डेवलप ग्लू ईयर ऑन वन साइड I am 100% scared because that question is of nasopharyngeal carcinoma, beta. A young child developing glue ear is due to adenoid problem, beta. Adults do not have adenoid. An adult patient developing glue ear on one side, I am suspecting nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Need PG question, INICT question, both, beta. Let me show you that question. Now see, 52 year old patient, beta. Adult patient. With right side hearing loss has been diagnosed to be case of right sided serous otitis media. Serous otitis media is the other name of glue ear. What is the priority in the management? My priority is not glue ear. Adult patient developing glue ear, I have to rule out first of all nasopharyngeal carcinoma. My priority is nasopharyngoscopy and biopsy. This is the star question for your paper. Nasopharyngoscopy biopsy. Please do not mark grommet insertion and all that. Glue ear is not my priority. My priority is to rule out nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Adult patient developing nasopharyngeal carcinoma on one side is something not to be ignored. It has to be you know, screened with the nasopharyngoscopy and you do the biopsy also. Beta. Very good. Beta. Very good. Wonderful. Question number 17. Oropharyngeal picture of a patient with trismus plummy voice dysphagia and look at the image beta look at the image please see look, look at the image uvula is pushed to the other side tonsil is pushed medially this is a typical scenario of what quincy this is a typical scenario of quincy beta once again one second beta this is a typical scenario of quincy one second This was the question, beta. This is a typical scenario of Quincy, beta. Quincy, okay. Please, please, please do not mark Quincy disease, beta. They are people. They are. They are the. You know, they will give you confusing. Quincy is not Quincy, beta. Spelling are same. Q Q U I. Don't look at Q U I and oh, say A. That is the incorrect answer, beta. Let us mark the answer correctly, beta. These questions are your own question. You know them, and don't be in a hurry to mark Quincy and come back, beta. Okay. We will not do these silly mistake. In the paper, we'll be. Giving more importance to the question which we know better. We'll discuss a strategy how to appear in the NEET PG exam close to it. But I'm just telling you, let us not get scared with the mistakes we do now. Let us learn from our mistake. Beta. Oh, what is Queen K? Queen K is nothing but angioneurotic edema of uvula. Beta. Queen K is not Quincy. Beta. Queen K is just angioneurotic edema of uvula, the one you're seeing in the picture right now over here. Okay. Let, may I remind you, Quincy, the neck is normal. Like in this question, neck was normal. But if Quincy plus neck swelling is there, can you see neck swelling, beta? Can you see neck swelling here? Then the answer will be parapharyngeal abscess. The famous equation, beta. The Quincy plus neck swelling is equal to parapharyngeal abscess, beta. Okay, fine. Very good. Now, clinical scenario quiz question, beta. 17 year old male patient underwent tonsillectomy on Monday. Monday, beta. Monday. Okay. Post operative period was uneventful. On Sunday morning, Monday to Sunday, six day, Sunday morning, he has presented the emergency department hospital with the complaint of mild bleeding from oral cavity, my dear friends. Mild bleeding, beta. Mild bleeding from oral cavity, beta. Now, this is a case of secondary hemorrhage, beta. Secondary hemorrhage and the treatment of secondary hemorrhage is admission and antibiotics, beta. That's the answer B, beta. B. Am I beta? Admission and antibiotics, beta. Everybody, this is the case of secondary. This is the case of secondary hemorrhage, beta. Let us revise the three hemorrhages, beta. Everybody, primary hemorrhage during surgery, no question possible. Reactionary hemorrhage within 24 hours of surgery, the cause is slippage of ligature, and treatment is re-exploration. How to remember, beta? R E reactionary. R E re-explore, beta. Reactionary. Re-explore. 
एनी हेमरेज आफ्टर ट्वेंटी फोर आवर इज सेकेंडरी हेमरेज बेटा मोस्टली आफ्टर फिफ्थ डे पेशेंट गॉड ऑपरेट ऑन मंडे ब्लीडिंग स्टार्ट ऑन संडे सिक्स डे इट सेकेंडरी हेमरेज इट इज डू टू इन्फेक्शन सो ट्रीटमेंट इज हॉस्पिटलाइजेशन एंड आई वी एंटीबायोटिक्स बेटा सो रिएक्शनरी हेमरेज इज विद इन ट्वेंटी फोर आवर ऑफ सर्जरी इट इज डू टू स्लिपेज ऑफ लाइगेचर ट्रीटमेंट इज री एक्सप्लोरेशन आर ई रिएक्शनरी आर ई री एक्सप्लोर सेकेंडरी हेमरेज इज जनरली आफ्टर फिफ्थ डे ऑफ सर्जरी इट डू टू इन्फेक्शन ऑफ ट्रांसफोफासा एंड इट्स अ माइल्ड ब्लीडिंग बेटा द क्वेश्चन से इज माइल्ड ब्लीडिंग बेटा ओके एंड ट्रीटमेंट इज इंटरवीनस एंटीबायोटिक बेटा ओके वट इज द कॉमनेस्ट प्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ नेजो फ्रेंजल कार्सिनोमा दिस इज वेरी वेरी पॉसिबल क्वेश्चन अगेन बेटा द आंसर इज नॉट कंडक्टिव रिंग लॉस द आंसर इज मेटास्टेटिक सर्वाइकल लिम्फिडिनोपैथी बेटा नेवर एवर लूज दिस मार्क बेटा नेजो फ्रेंजल कार्सिनोमा स्टार्ट फ्रॉम एन एन विल स्टार्ट फ्रॉम नेक बेटा Something will happen in the neck. Why neck is over there, beta? Why neck is over there? Look at screen, beta. Fossa of Rosenmuller. This is visual question of your paper, beta. This is eustachian tube opening. Eustachian tube opening, beta. Over here, okay. Anything above that, if they mark like this, this is fossa of Rosenmuller. This one, beta. Okay. So tumor start from here, beta. Now this is a hidden cancer, occult primary, beta. Please look at screen, beta. Look at screen. The cancer is starting from here. nobody can see behind the nose and one fine day it will metastasize and it will cause a cervical lymphadenopathy before you even know that you have cancer it is already metastasized beta okay patient one day will come to the clinic and say doctor i have got this kind of swelling in my neck unfortunate part of nasopharyngeal carcinoma is most common presentation of nasopharyngeal carcinoma is metastatic cervical lymphadenopathy okay fine very good now another question on nasopharyngeal carcinoma very important topic angiofibroma nasopharyngeal carcinoma quinzy retropharyngeal abscess ludwig's angina are core important topic of pharynx beta okay trotostride beta trotostride is seen in nasopharyngeal carcinoma all are its feature except does it have unilateral temporoparietal pain yes due to fifth nerve involvement conductive wearing loss due to conductive wearing loss due to what beta anybody conductive wearing loss is due to glue ear facial palsy is never a feature beta palatal palsy is a feature due to 10th nerve involvement the answer to this question is c beta c very good c trotostride is having all the feature except facial palsy beta facial palsy is not a feature of this let us do one thing let us revise the four triads of ent beta let us finish the four triads of ent right now very good trotostride everybody trotostride is seen in npc what is npc nasopharyngeal carcinoma okay and let me tell you the mnemonic of this is also npc but n p c what is n n is neuralgia in temporoparietal area due to fifth nerve involvement p is due to palatal palsy and c is due to conductive wearing loss all are unilateral all are ipsilateral beta all are unilateral or are ipsilateral npc is the name of nasopharyngeal carcinoma abbreviation npc is the mnemonic of the trotostride also n for neuralgia in temporoparietal area p for palatal palsy due to 10th nerve involvement and c for conductive wearing loss due to unilateral glue ear all are unilateral all are ipsilateral beta very good now next triad samtel triad the triad of allergy for pharmacology question beta there is allergy to anesthetics particularly aspirin beta there is asthma and there is allergic nasal polyp which is ethmoidal polyp so samtel triad is basically pharmacology question there is an allergy to anesthetics particularly aspirin there is asthma in the patient uh, allergy and uh, allergic nasal polyp which are called the ethmoidal polyp samtel triad third triad very 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 important question of ear beta gradinigo syndrome or petrocytosis beta petrocytosis how to remember beta g e r d have you heard about gerd beta gerd na g e r d gastro esophageal reflux disease let us use that gerd for mnemonic of gradinigo syndrome e for ear discharge r for retroorbital pain due to fifth nerve involvement and diplopia due to sixth nerve involvement beta am i clear beta g e r d it's a gradinigo syndrome is seen in petrocytosis and it has got three feature g for gradinigo syndrome e for ear discharge r for retroorbital pain and d for diplopia beta this is a star question of your paper beta okay now another triad for dermatology beta melkerson rosenthal syndrome is a visual question of the paper beta okay triad is what number 1 recurrent facial palsy number 2 fissured tongue tongue has got deep cuts beta deep fissured tongue and number 3 lip swelling beta okay let us let us see the syndrome name melkerson rosenthal syndrome is a derma 
visual question there is a triad of recurrent facial paralysis with fissured tongue and lip swelling beta. okay there are four triads of ent beta let's go further now larry's question beta three month old child has developed persistent dyspnea three month old child beta and strider after an episode of upper respiratory tract infection beta the cry is normal the ct scan of the neck shows subgroup diameter is 2.5 mm subgroup diameter is 2.5 mm and there is no improvement in next 6 months subsequently the child is operated for airway surgery and a silicon tube has been placed in the airway what's the name of this tube the answer is montgomery's silicon tracheal tube tube just two days before i put four devices which we use in ent in one one minute revise all the four devices on the same channel beta okay montgomery's silicon tracheal t tube is the answer beta now what is the diagnosis of this case beta this is a case of congenital subglottic stenosis beta okay because diameter of subglottic area is very narrow now for this everybody should know congenital subglottic stenosis is important topic for inict and it has got grading called cotton mayer grading of congenital subglottic stenosis now grade 1 is 0 to 50% obstruction we see this on ct scan beta okay fine now grade 2 is 51 to 70% grade 3 is 71 to 99% and grade 4 is no lumen beta please see imagine this is normal 0 to 50% blockage then 51 to 70% blockage then 71 to 99% blockage and then no lumen detectable beta no lumen detectable the subglottic area is getting narrow and narrow narrow on the ct scan beta can you see grading beta how much narrow on the ct scan beta okay fine beta let's let's revise cotton my grading is applicable to congenital subglottic stenosis grading done on ct scan what is grade 1 grade 1 is 0 to 50% obstruction grade 2 is 51 to 70% obstruction and grade 3 is 71 to 99% and grade 4 is no lumen detectable beta okay fine now the treatment is also like that grade 1 the treatment is conservative beta conservative okay grade 2 the treatment is laser oblique dilatation you have to pass the dilator to make it bigger followed by application of mitomycin c that's the question beta mitomycin c is to prevent the restenosis of the dilated area beta whenever you have to prevent the restenosis think of mitomycin c it has got anti fibroblastic property mitomycin c is applied topically beta we are not giving systemically topical application of mitomycin c beta now let us discuss the grade 3 grade 4 beta now grade 3 grade 4 are very severe and they need a surgery called ltr laryngo tracheal reconstruction you make it again redesign in a bigger way beta laryngo tracheal re reconstruction but to support that reconstructed part you have to put a tube which is called montgomery's silicon tracheal t tube which is a t shaped tube beta this tube is put for few days to support the graft in the surgery called ltr what is ltr laryngo tracheal reconstruction okay so grade 3 grade 4 go for ltr followed by placement of montgomery silicon tracheal t tube this is your visual question my dear friends okay now 52 year old female patient underwent thyroidectomy total thyroidectomy beta superior laryngeal nerve got damaged what are the expected post operative symptom of this patient beta okay please see on the screen superior laryngeal nerve has got two branches beta the external branch the internal branch the external branch supplies the cricothyroid i hope everybody knows all muscles of laryngeal nerve supplied by recurrent laryngeal nerve except cricothyroid which is supplied by external branch of superior laryngeal nerve and this is the main tensor beta tensor and tensor give us quality of voice beta okay and this will lead to poor quality of voice beta so one symptom will be poor quality tensor give us quality of voice the symptom will be poor quality of voice beta and examination will show what important question examination will show examination will show bowed down vocal cord beta examination will show bowed down vocal cords something when it's not tense beta something when it's not tense it's going to bow down beta bowed down vocal cord beta bowed down vocal cord am i clear beta the the cord will get you know drooped down bowed down vocal cord 
okay clear fine now let's do the internal branch beta the internal branch is sensory beta sensory to what sensory to supraglottis supraglottis therefore the problem will be aspiration vocal cord palsy is the easiest topic in larynx beta i wish we had more time this is mathematics beta mathematics believe me it's not that difficult as books say beta the answer is very clear beta symptoms are poor quality of voice and aspiration beta. why aspiration due to loss of the sensory input to the supraglottis why poor quality of voice because of loss of the tensor property of cricothyroid and tensor give us quality of voice beta now look at the answer beta now what is the expected outcome poor, poor quality of voice respiratory distress no the answer is c beta c is a better answer beta aspiration with poor quality of voice am i clear beta aspiration with poor quality of voice okay fine very good is it clear to all okay now let me take you further beta i hope you remember this anatomy bache that this is my thyroid gland very close to the upper pole i have got two now very close to lower pole i got two more now beta upper pole we have got superior laryngeal now lower pole reticular laryngeal now beta first surgeon cut this one we discuss that question now next question is if this is cut beta first surgeon cut the sln both side now he is saying rln cut both side beta now what will happen beta now please see 52 year old female patient underwent total thyroidectomy while surgery both rln got damaged beta okay now what is the expected post operative symptom beta now everybody think with me when i say let us revise in my mind all muscle of larynx supplied by recurrent laryngeal nerve except cricothyroid now cricothyroid has got two properties adductor property and tensor property beta now rln got damaged only one muscle is working cricothyroid beta just mathematics beta it's not cramming it's mathematics rln got damaged both side only muscle working is cricothyroid beta because the famous statement of anatomy is all muscle of larynx supplied by recurrent laryngeal nerve except cricothyroid which is supplied by external branch of superior laryngeal nerve that is intact now this is an adductor it's a tensor also it's adductor also don't you think so look at my hand beta this will bring both vocal cord in the midline beta okay so this will lead to bilateral abductor palsy whenever you are doing the name of the palsy never think of muscle beta think of movement think of movement bache think of movement beta abductor means abduction palsy means absent but i will translate the muscle into movement this will make my life easy beta bilateral abduction is absent beta bilateral abduction is absent beta bilateral abduction is absent bilateral abduction is absent beta okay bilateral abductor palsy bilateral abduction is absent beta okay means both vocal cord are in both vocal cord are in midline beta both vocal cord are in midline beta am i clear both vocal cord are in midline bachche am i clear both vocal cord are in midline don't don't you think so look at me behind beta both both cord are close beta let me show you how the cord are there beta like this now let me tell you a golden rule beta remember golden rule we breathe with open vocal cord we speak with closed vocal cord the golden rule simple golden rule is we breathe with we breathe with open vocal cord we speak with closed vocal cord and these are permanently closed vocal cord beta they are paralyzed in this position so can you speak like this yes but can you breathe like this no so patient will be having difficulty in breathing but the voice will be pretty normal normal beta we breathe with open vocal cord we speak with closed vocal cord these are permanently closed vocal cord so voice will not be affected that much but the breathing will be affected so the answer of this question is if r l n got damage the answer will be respiratory distress with the normal voice beta d is the answer beta please do not over complicate the issue for yourself it's absolutely clear beta this is a median position beta this is median position or the paramedian position little bit paramedian beta this is not a sufficient position for you to breathe beta this is a case of bilateral abductor palsy bilateral abductor palsy beta amagle beta bilateral abductor palsy okay wonderful so patient will be having respiratory distress with normal voice beta now let us do similar question over here beta 6 year old male child beta 6 year old male child comes to emergency 
with strider and respiratory distress for last six hours. The vocal cord are found to be lying in median position and are immobile, beta. Immobile means it's a case of vocal cord palsy, beta. Vocal cord palsy. Am I clear, beta? So, cord are in which position? Median position. Please understand. Again, it's a case of bilateral abductor palsy. Cord are in midline, na? Which movement is absent? Abduction absent is labeled as bilateral abductor palsy, beta. For this, we use which thyroplasty, beta? Type 2 thyroplasty, also called as lateralization. Lateralization of vocal cord. Also called as lateralization of vocal cord, beta. You understand lateralization, beta? Please understand. We pass a suture around one vocal cord. Look at my, look at my hand, beta. We pass suture around one vocal cord. We pull it outward so that air start going in the lungs, beta. This is called lateralization, beta. Okay? So, bilateral abductor palsy, the treatment of choice would be type 2 thyroplasty, which is also called lateralization of vocal cord or suture cordopexy. Suture cordopex. Can you see over here, beta? A suture has been applied to pull it on the side, beta. Okay? So, type 2 thyroplasty or lateralization of vocal cord. This is the definitive treatment of bilateral abductor palsy, beta. My dear friends, if, if they ask you this question, what is the immediate treatment of bilateral abductor palsy? Immediate treatment. This is not the immediate treatment. Immediate treatment is life-saving treatment. Immediate treatment will be tracheostomy, beta. Am I clear, beta? No confusion over there. Immediate treatment will be tracheostomy. This is definitive treatment, beta. So, always, always think like a doctor, a clinician, beta. Bilateral abductor palsy, patient cannot breathe. So, my immediate attempt is to save the patient first. Immediate treatment is tracheostomy, beta. Then after 6 months, you do the definite treatment and that is called as type 2 thyroplasty or suture cordopexy or the, the lateralization of vocal cord. Beta. Are there any other options available for the treatment? Yes. What are they? The other options are, next one, is that you remove this much part of vocal cord, beta, this much part. This is called CO2 laser cordectomy. The other treatment option for bilateral cord palsy, bilateral abductor palsy of vocal cord is CO2 laser cordectomy. Somebody said, don't do this, you do this, beta. They say, remove the, this part, this is arytenoid, beta. This is called laser arytenoidectomy. Basically, your only purpose is you want to make some space for the air to go inside, beta. Other treatment number one, CO2 laser cordectomy. Other treatment number two, laser arytenoidectomy. And number three, the third one is Kashima operation, INICT question, beta. Very likely in need PG also. The third one is Kashima operation, beta. What is Kashima operation? Let me explain it to you. Kashima operation says that, don't remove this, don't remove this. Kashima says that, why don't you do this? You just apply a cut of CO2 laser over here, beta. Because this membranous part of vocal cord is attached to the cartilaginous part of vocal cord over here. If you apply the laser cut at the junction of membranous and cartilaginous part, the membranous part will go a little laterally and that will open the space for you to get the air in the lungs. This is called a Kashima operation. Very important INICT need PG question, beta. Kashima. This is called which operation? Kashima, beta. Kashima, not Kakima, beta. Kashima. This is called Kashima operation. K-A-S-H-I-M-A. Kashima operation, beta. Kashima. This is called Kashima operation, beta. Kashima operation. Very good. Now, see the same question in the next one. The given, given image is of CO2 laser assisted surgical procedure done in a case of bilateral abductor palsy. What is the name of this surgery is Kashima operation. Beta. Can you see over here? The laser is being applied to cut that membranous part from the cartilaginous part. This is called the Kashima operation. Beta. This is called Kashima operation. Beta. Okay. Please don't forget the Kashima operation. Let me remind you. Kashima operation is done for bilateral abductor paralysis as an alternative to the definite treatment, beta. What is this? This is actually separation of membranous and cartilaginous part of vocal cord using CO2 laser, beta. Okay? So, the bilateral abductor palsy, the standard treatment is type 2 thyroplasty or lateralization. Other treatment is CO2 laser cordectomy, arytenoidectomy or Kashima operation or number 4 is nerve muscle implant also. This, that doesn't work. Okay? But immediate treatment, please mark tracheostomy, beta. Read the question carefully. They confuse you. Immediate treatment or definite treatment? Immediate treatment, tracheostomy better. Very good. Now, 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन विच इज द फॉलोइंग प्रोसीजर डन फॉर अडक्टर पॉलिसी ऑफ वोकल कॉर्ड अडक्टर मीन बोथ कॉर्ड आर ओपन बेटा अडक्टर अडक्टर मतलब लुक एट अडक्टर पॉलिसी मतलब अडक्शन एबसेंट आई वुड नेवर गेट कंफ्यूज इन द पेपर आई विल ट्रांसलेट दी मसल इन टू मूवमेंट बेटा अडक्टर माने अडक्शन पॉलिसी माने एबसेंट आई रीड लाइक दिस अडक्टर माने अडक्शन पॉलिसी माने अडक्शन एबसेंट मीन्स कॉर्ड आर ओपन अप वट आई विल डू मिडलाइजेशन एंड वट इज मिडलाइजेशन कॉल्ड टाइप वन थारो प्लास्टिक बेटा ए ए ओके बेटा फाइन सो आंसर इज ए टाइप वन थारो प्लास्टिक और मिडलाइजेशन वेरी गुड वेरी गुड बेटा लेट एस वाई नॉट रिवाइज ऑल दारो प्लास्टिक वन बाय वन बेटा टाइप वन टाइप वन बेटा एवरीबडी टाइप वन इज मिडलाइजेशन बेटा टाइप वन मिडलाइजेशन डन फॉर अडक्टर पॉलिसी टाइप वन एंड टाइप टू आर ऑपोजिट ऑफ इचर बेटा टाइप टू इज लेटरलाइजेशन डन फॉर एबडक्टर पॉलिसी बेटा ओके टाइप वन एंड टाइप टू आर ऑपोजिट बेटा सिमिलरली टाइप थ्री एंड टाइप फोर आर ऑपोजिट टाइप थ्री इज शॉर्टनिंग लूजनिंग ऑफ वोकल कॉर्ड डन फॉर प्यूबरफोनिया अ मेल स्पीकिंग लाइक अ फीमेल एंड टाइप फोर इज रिवर्स ऑफ दैट लेंदनिंग टाइटनिंग ऑफ वोकल कॉर्ड डन फॉर एंड्रोफोनिया Eight MCQs right now on the screen, but eight MCQs. Let us revise. Type one is medialization done for adductor palsy. Type two reverse, but type two lateralization done for the abductor palsy. Type three shortening losing of vocal cord done for puberphonia. Type four reverse of that lengthening tightening of vocal cord done for androphonia, but this is something you you can see. Take a screenshot and the eight MCQs on the screen right now, but very good. In casual larynx patient. With Strider and respiratory difficulty, the tracheostomy is done at which level? I hope you remember. We do high tracheostomy, beta. Laryngeal cancer, we do high tracheostomy. The answer is, what is the answer, beta? A B C D, beta. A B C D, beta. What is the answer, beta? A B C D. Answer is not A, beta. Answer is C. Don't mark, don't mark cervical vertebra in a hurry, beta. They are, they are giving, going to give you certain, you know, bouncer over there, beta. First and second vertebral level. Where's the trachea? Trachea start from C six, beta. Don't mark A, beta. Don't mark A. That's why I put this question, beta. Not to everybody see what we are doing. This is what we do in the NEET PG also, beta. Don't no worries. Nobody will get discouraged by this. Everybody will be learning, learning, and learning from every mistake till the time last day comes of the exam. Only one exam matter is the last exam. We should be proud of doing mistakes if we are learning from our mistakes, beta. Let's do the mistakes now. Let's learn, beta. No problem, beta. No, sir. That's absolutely fine. You know, I have to read the question carefully. That's why I, I put these questions in such a way so that you are reminded. Not for ENT. My concern is not ENT. My concern is that you should excel in the exam. You should encash all your knowledge bit on the. For that, you have to develop time sense. And number two, you should be alert in the exam, bit. Okay. Read the question carefully. The answer is C, bit. Don't worry, bit. Don't worry. Everybody does the same thing, but we we'll learn from our mistakes, bit. So high tracheostomy is done at first. And second tracheal ring, beta. Over here, beta. First and second tracheal ring. What is the usual site of tracheostomy? Second and third tracheal ring, and that is called mid tracheostomy. One more question, beta. Most common site of tracheostomy is second and third tracheal ring, and that is called mid tracheostomy. But in cancer larynx patient, we do high tracheostomy, and that is done at first and second tracheal ring, my dear friends. Okay, fine. Okay. Now, next question, beta. 42 year old patient singer by profession has been practicing for a concert he has a concert he is trying to practice trying to develop a special kind of bass in his voice but he has developed hoarse voice due to over practice on laryngoscopy he is found to have adduction of false vocal cord while phonating beta this is a case of dysphonia plica ventricularis beta guys we do not use false cord to speak False cord are rudimentary, beta. We speak from true vocal cord. False vocal cord are useless. The the anyone who producing sound from false vocal cord is suffering from dysphonia plica ventricularis, beta. Don't don't feel that this scary word dysphonia plica ventricularis is production of sound from false vocal cord, beta. How to remember? False vocal cord is also called ventricular band. Ventricular band, beta. Band माने plica, plica can see ventricular here. Plica is band. Dysphonia plica ventricularis means production of sound from false vocal cord. बेटा, am I clear? So plica mean band. Ventricular band मतलब plica ventricularis. Dysphonia मतलब wrong kind of voice being produced from them. The answer is dysphonia plica ventricularis. Okay, fine, very good. 
No practical question of pediatric ENT beta. Three year old child has been brought to pediatric emergency with history of fever, moment say respiratory difficulty, get alert. Strider, drooling of saliva, since yes, strider, noisy breathing, sick patient. Child has got SPO2 level of 80% beta. This is a serious patient beta. What would be your immediate management? I am, I am suspecting a diagnosis of acute epiglottitis. No other diagnosis comes to my mind with this kind of picture. The first diagnosis is acute epiglottitis, beta. Okay. What would you do first, beta? Get an X-ray neck to look for thumb sign? No, no. Antibiotic, urgent intubation, hourly assessment of larynx by laryngoscopy. The answer is airway management by urgent intubation, beta. Think like a doctor. Don't think for thumb sign and all that. Think, think the clinical scenario. Oh, so emergency, 80% saturation. I won't send the patient to X-ray machine, beta. Patient may die over there. So, it's a pediatric airway emergency, acute epiglottitis. So, the answer should be urgent airway management by intubation. Okay. Now, one important question of pediatric is, do not do repeated laryngoscopy in this patient because it can lead to, number one, laryngospasm. Number two, it can increase the laryngeal edema. So, laryngoscopy should not be done again and again because that can induce laryngospasm or it can aggravate laryngeal edema also. So, answer is urgent intubation. Let's do another clinical scenario. 55-year-old woman who has been suffering from COPD with a neuro muscular respiratory insufficiency. She is not able to cough out secretions. Beta. One week back, she underwent tracheostomy for airway support and bronchial toilet because she cannot cough. Her lungs are full of secretions. You have done a tracheostomy for the bronchial clearing beta, toilet. She is now in the ward. In the morning round, you find you are the intern. This question was you are an intern. The tracheostomy tube is blocked. The secretions are totally jammed up the tube and the tube is blocked and SP is 72%. Beta. Oh, it's a very serious airway emergency, beta. The block tube is a disaster, beta. The block tracheostomy tube is can kill the patient, beta. It is exactly the same situation as some, as if somebody come, keeps a pillow on your face and tries to press the pillow on your face. And you, <sighs> what do you do when somebody keeps a pillow on your face and presses the pillow on your face in the sleep? You try to just push the pillow away from you, beta. Somehow you push the pillow away from you. So in this case also, don't start oxygen, beta. The tube is blocked. Where the oxygen will go? Why to give injection Darifilin? The bronchial position is absolute. There is no bronchoconstriction. Tube is blocked, beta. Air is not going. Don't do suction of tube now because now secretion are dried up, beta. Remove the tube immediately. This is the answer, beta. You are an intern. You should remove the tube immediately and somebody will bring the new tube and put the tube. But your reflex as a doctor should be remove the tube immediately because patient is under hypoxia. 72% SpO2 level, beta. These kind of questions can be handled properly if you just maintain the common sense. Beta. Long, lengthy questions are not always scary questions. Beta. You have to maintain the sense of the question in your mind. Always, always read the last line carefully and read the four choices carefully. Then go to the main body of the question. Beta. Read the last line, read the four choices, go to the main body. Then, then you already know what to say. Beta. Sometimes the question is one kilometer long, but it's a, it's a very easy question. Beta. A baby is crying, they will make a story, a baby was taken there and there. And the mother says that the, the baby has been passing the red current jelly stools, beta. I know it is intersusception, beta. I know it is intersusception. Why to worry, beta? It's not that every question is like that, but a lot of questions which look like kilometer long still are doable question, beta. Okay? When do we do? Suction should be done every hour in such patient, beta. Every hour, depending on the secretion level, it may be two hourly, three hourly, depending on the patient's secretion level. But generally, we say it should be done every hourly in such kind of patient. Beta. Okay, fine. Now, the biggest problems for everyone, let me solve it for you guys. The simplified approach to memorize the cancer larynx staging. Beta. This is a hell lot of issue. What is T1? What is T2? What is T3, T4? First of all, let me tell you, the question will always come of T2, T3, T4. They will never ask you T1 question. Beta. What is T1? Let us do that. T1 means only one named structure involved. Tumor involving epiglottis is T1. Beta. Khatam. T1, epiglottis, only epiglottis involved T1. Beta. Okay. T2, more than one named structure involved. Tumor involving epiglottis, comma, false vocal cord. If you read two different names in the MCQ, it's 100% T2 beta. Minimum it is T2. Generally, it's T2 and beyond. If you see two different structures, two different structures beta, over there, it is actually 100% it is T2 minimum beta. Now, the question, most common question is T3 beta. T3 beta. 
T3 is vocal cord is fixed or immobile. The star question beta. They will make a one kilometer long statement and they say and left vocal cord is fixed. I know it is T3 beta. Or for INICT question or there is invasion of pre-epiglottic space or paraglottic space. Any space word mentioned is T3 beta. Vocal cord fix is also T3 my dear friends. T4 beta. Don't get confused too much by over dissecting question. If thyroid cartilage word is mentioned, it is T4 beta. Don't, 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 but they will not bother you T4A, T4B beta because treatment doesn't change with T4A or T4B beta. So, thyroid cartilage perichondritis, thyroid cartilage invasion seen on MRI scan or tumor has gone extra laryngeal into neck structures, it is T4 beta. We have to make sense out of question. It's a 19 subject paper beta. It's not a PhD of ENT or surgery or gynae. Every question has to make sense. Let us make the very simplified scientific rule to calculate staging of laryngeal cancer. Let us revise. If one name structure involved, it is T1. If MCQ says epiglottis comma, airy epiglottic fold, two different name came, T2, for sure T2. Now for that, read further. If vocal cord is fixed, or some space is involved, T3 mark. If thyroid cartilage word coming over there, invasion of thyroid cartilage, perichondritis of thyroid cartilage, or extra laryngeal extension into thyroid gland, for example, it's T4 beta. T4, my dear friends. Okay. Now, let us finish the treatment also beta. Treatment. T1 radiotherapy, undoubtedly radiotherapy beta. But for T1 glottic cancer nowadays, if particularly vocal cord cancer is there, vocal cord cancer then laser surgery is a better answer than radiotherapy beta. Will you remember it beta? Laser surgery is a better answer than radiotherapy my dear friends. Am I clear beta? So T1 radiotherapy but nowadays for T1 glottic cancer laser is a better answer than radiotherapy beta. Now T2 again radiotherapy. The second best option is partial laryngectomy if lung function are normal INICT question. The T2 goes for radiotherapy but if lung function are normal then you go for the the partial laryngectomy as a second best option beta, okay? But lung function normal in this patient who is suffering from cancer with smoking history there, generally I've got COPD also beta. Partial laryngectomy is of two type beta. HPL, VPL beta. No IPL, no IPL. Nothing should occur in your brain till the time the need PG is over beta. Nothing should occur. No, nothing, nothing. No, nothing should be done. Only study beta. This is the most crucial phase of my life. I am going to be super dedicated beta. I know these 40 days will decide the quality of life for next 40 years. We'll talk about it later, some other session. But only one commitment from all of you is, I will be super dedicated. I am not the best, I don't want to prove it to anyone, but I'll do my level best. I'm not the best, I don't want to prove to anyone, I don't want to compare myself with anyone, but I'm, I'm going to do my level best in the remaining days. Better. That's what the life goes on. That's what the life is all about, okay? Fine, horizontal partial and vertical partial better. Horizontal partial is done for T2 supraglottic and vertical partial is done for T2 glottic cancer beta. Look at me beta, look at me. Like you cut like this, horizontal partial. You cut like this, vertical partial beta, okay? So horizontal partial is done for T2 supraglottic and vertical partial is done for T2 glottic cancer beta, okay? Fine. Now T3, T4. Total laryngectomy followed by radiotherapy, okay? And the second best option is concurrent chemo radiation beta. Concurrent chemo radiation. Let's revise the cancer staging and treatment beta. Everybody, T1, only one structure involved. Treatment is radiotherapy. But for T1 glottic cancer, I'll mark laser surgery. Better answer than radiotherapy. T2, radiotherapy. But if lung function is normal and he asks the second best alternative to that, then partial laryngectomy and horizontal partial, vertical partial. For T2 supraglottic, I will do horizontal partial. For T2 glottic, I will do vertical partial. But for T3, T4, I will mark total laryngectomy followed by radiotherapy. If the question says patient is unwilling for surgery, then the second best option is concurrent chemo radiation. Again, this has been asked in AIMS beta. They wrote patient is unwilling for any kind of surgery beta. Guys, tell me in the chat box, are you more confident about the cancer larynx staging and its treatment so that you are able to handle it the paper or not? Okay, fine. Now, next question beta. Let us do some practice of what we read just now. So again, one kilometer long question beta. 60 year old male patient presented with insidious dysphagia, referred otalgia and weight loss. Cancer patient beta. Okay. The, the laryngoscopy shows smooth surface growth involving tip of epiglottis and left airy epiglottic fold beta. Weight here beta. Two different name came. Two different name came. 
He says number one epiglottis, number two a fold. It is minimum T two, beta. T two is minimum there, beta. Okay, with immobile left vocal cord will make it T three, beta. So the answer of this question is supraglottic carcinoma stage T three. Can you see how can we easily make it out? It looks difficult, but I know immobile cord is T three, beta. What is supraglottic cancer? Supraglottic cancer present with dysphagia, throat pain feature, beta. Okay, wonderful T three, very nice. Next question, beta. Same. Pattern question. Beta. CT scan of the neck of the patient of carcinoma larynx has been found to have involvement of again waiter. Epiglot is involved, right ventricular band also involved. Beta. Minimum T2. Two name came T2 minimum. Let's read further. And right true vocal invading into pre epiglottic space. Anybody, what is the staging? Pre any space involved? T3. What is the answer? Total laryngectomy followed by radiotherapy. Beta. I'm, my dear friend, is it clear to everybody? Now tell me in the chat box, are you confident about laryngeal carcinoma staging and management? Are you confident, beta? Is it okay, everybody? Yes, it's T3, beta, everybody. Wonderful. Tell me in the chat box, are you confident about your concept of laryngeal cancer staging and management? Okay. Now, let's go to the next question, beta. Study the given prosthesis. It's being used in ENT practice. This is a visual question of INICT beta. This is the, what is this you are seeing over here? First of all, this is the whole of the permanent tracheostomy beta. Permanent tracheostomy beta. Permanent tracheostomy. Permanent tracheostomy beta. Okay. This is what, this is this one beta. This is a tracheoesophageal puncture device beta. Tracheoesophageal puncture device. This is used for production of voice after laryngectomy has been done beta. Okay, the answer of this question is voice production after total laryngectomy. So, this is a visual question. Anytime you see in the neck, there is a hole on the uh, trachea and the posterior tracheal wall shows some plastic piece. This is a tracheoesophageal puncture device and the example of TP device is very common one is Blom Singer. Beta. Blom Singer and number two which is more commonly used now provokes. Okay. So this is a very possible visual question, tracheo esophageal puncture device, it is used for the voice production after laryngectomy, the examples are Blomsinger device and the Provox device, okay, fine, okay. Next, ear question now, all of the following are true about cochlear implant except cochlear implant, ear question now but everybody, the cochlear implant electrodes uh, stimulates the cochlear nerve endings, correct, correct. The cochlear implant electrode stimulate cochlear nerve ending beta. Look at screen beta, look at screen. Can you see over here? You have put an electrode in the cochlea and that is going to cause the stimulation of cochlear nerve endings. So, the prerequisite is normal 8th nerve beta, normal 8th nerve. This is the INICD need PG question. The 8th nerve integrity is essential for cochlear implant successful outcome beta. This is important question beta. What you should be establishing before you do the cochlear implant surgery? Eighth nerve has to be normal because this is the design of the implant is it is going to do the electrical stimulation of cochlear nerve endings beta. Okay. Multi-channel implant gives better outcome for the patient. Correct beta. Multi-channel means it has got 22 different point of stimulation beta. Okay. They are better. The implant electrode is placed through oval window. Wrong. The answer is D beta. He is saying except na D. It is not an oval window. It is a round window. Oval window is blocked by what? Foot plate of stapes. I cannot put the implant through the, through the uh, oval window. I have to put the implant electrode through the round window beta. Can you see beta over here? Can you see anybody? What is this window? Oval window. What is this window? Round window. Round window beta. Anybody? Cochlea has got three parts beta. Scala, vestibuli, scala, media, scala, tympani. The implant electrode goes into scala, tympani beta. Scala, tympani. Okay, scala, tympani beta. Scala, tympani beta. Okay beta, fine. Please understand beta. Please understand. Three things to revise beta. Eight nerve integrity is important before cochlear implant surgery is done. The electrode is passed through which window? Round window. The electrode enters into which part of cochlea? Scala tympani of cochlea beta. One more question. The ideal age of surgery in a prelingually deaf child, prelingual deaf means deaf since birth, is one year. The ideal age of cochlear implant surgery in a prelingually deaf child means deaf since birth is one year of age beta. One year of age. Very good. 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन विच द फॉलोइंग इज नॉट एन इंडिकेशन ऑफ नॉट एन इंडिकेशन ऑफ द डिवाइस शोन इन द पिक्चर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वट इज दिस दिस इज बाहा बोन एंकर्ड हेरिंग एड बोन एंकर्ड हेरिंग एड यू जस्ट एंकर दियरिंग एड ऑन टू द स्कल बोन बेटा हाउ प्लीज सी इट इज गॉट थ्री पार्ट बेटा थ्री पार्ट दिस इज गॉट अ टाइटेनियम स्क्रू विच यू पुट टू द स्कल बोन बेटा बोन एंकर्ड हेरिंग एड इज अ स्पेशलाइज सर्जरी यू पुट दैट स्क्रू टू द स्कल बोन देन यू अटैच अ साउंड प्रोसेसर to the screw through an attachment called abutment beta so number 1 screw is put on the skull bone number 2 sound processor is attached to the screw through an attachment called abutment baha stimulates cochlea through bone conduction baha actually goes sound goes to cochlea through bone conduction beta bone conduction okay fine what is which is not indication of the device shown in the image beta chronic wet ear yes it is the indication beta why look at the screen beta look as if the pus is coming from your ear can you put a normal hearing aid beta can you put a hearing aid here no within one day hearing aid will get spoiled beta you know the pus will short circuit the hearing aid beta the khatam so better put the hearing aid here beta here so chronic wet ear is an indication number 2 anosia beta look as kind of anosia absence of pinna beta pinna is absent if pinna is absent where will you put the hearing aid beta where is the hearing aid behind the ear in the ear there is no pinna how will you support the hearing aid you will have to anchor the hearing aid to the skull bone over here okay it is also used for the unilateral severe snhl beta unilateral severe snhl beta okay fine but how can it be used for chronic for michels cochlear aplasia this cannot be indication beta this is indication this is indication but michels cochlear aplasia cannot be indication because why baha stimulate cochlea directly through bone conduction beta there is no cochlea aplasia of cochlea beta this is not a case for baha beta this case will go for auditory brain stem implant beta abi because cochlea is not there you cannot put cochlear implant baha you cannot put because baha stimulate cochlea directly through bone conduction the only option left is to go to the brain and you put the brain stem implant in this case beta okay otherwise all of the unilateral severe snhl is also the indication of the baha okay fine now let us go further beta One of the following is a feature of Meniere's disease, beta. Meniere's diplocusis is a feature of Meniere's disease, beta. Meniere's causes diplocusis. I hear same sound in two different frequencies, beta. Let us revise the four cusis, bache. Four cusis in ear. Press by cusis is age-related SNHL. Four cusis of ENT, beta. Press by cusis is age-related sensory hearing loss. Diplocusis is Meniere's disease, beta. Meniere's disease. Hyperacusis seen in Bell's palsy. and paracusis villosi is seen in otosclerosis beta let us revise beta four question press by cusis age related sensory hearing loss number 2 diplocusis i hear same sound in two different frequencies this is a feature of meniere's disease and then hyperacusis is seen in bell's palsy i hope remember hyperacusis is due to loss of stapedial reflex beta okay and paracusis villosi patient here patient here better in noisy environment it's a feature of otosclerosis beta otosclerosis beta okay fine now next is all are true about bppv except beta bppv benign paroxysmal position of vertigo beta look as kind of what is happening in bppv first of all this is your saccule this is your utricle both are meant for linear balance beta okay now there is one macula here macula is the sensory end organ of utricle and saccule beta both of them got mac one macula and utricul one macula and saccul beta okay now on the macula we have got some gelatinous layer and that gelatinous layer has got some calcium carbonate crystal called otoconia or otolith once again beta macula is the sensory end organ of utricle and saccule it is covered by gelatinous layer which has calcium carbonate crystals called otoconia or otolith If otoconia turn free and reach the semicircular canal, it will lead to disease called BPPV. But benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. Doctor, when I change my head position, I suddenly feel vertigo for few seconds. Doctor, doctor, I just feel a spinning sensation and then I'm all right. Only for few seconds. Okay, there is no hearing loss in this patient. There is no tinnitus in this patient. Okay, it is the most common cause of peripheral vertigo. But and the most commonly involved canal is. posterior scc beta most commonly otogonia going to posterior semi circular canal beta let's see the question now one more time beta please see all are true for bppv except 
वर्टिगो सेंसेशन प्रोसेस वो टू टू थ्री आवर रॉन्ग फॉर फ्यू सेकेंड ओनली फ्यू सेकेंड ओनली बेटा ओटोकोनिया मोस्टली माइग्रेट टू पुसिया कैनाल यस देर इज नो एयरिंग लॉस इन दिस कंडीशन यस ओनली वर्टिगो इज देयर बेटा नो एयरिंग लॉस नो टेनिटस ओके एंड इट्स द मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज ऑफ पेरिफल वर्टिगो बेटा लेट अस डू टू विजुअल क्वेश्चन ऑफ बीपीपीवी बेटा नो डायग्नोस्टिक टेस्ट ऑफ बीपीपीवी इज डिक सॉल पाइक मैन्यूवर और हॉल पाइक मैन्यूवर बेटा इट हैज गॉट टू पोजीशन बेटा हाउ टू आइडेंटिफाई दिस फॉर द विजुअल क्वेश्चन इट हैज गॉट टू पोजीशन वन सिटिंग अदर लाइंग डाउन बेटा सो ब्रिंग द पेशेंट डाउन एंड लुक फॉर वर्टिगो एंड स्टैग्मस बेटा ओके सो डिक सॉल पाइक मैन्यूवर इज हैविंग टू पोजीशन बेटा दिस इज डायग्नोस्टिक टेस्ट ऑफ बीपीपीवी एंड एप्लेस मैन्यूवर बेटा एप्लेस ई पी एल ई वाई एप्लेस मैन्यूवर इज ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ बीपीपीवी माय डियर फ्रेंड ट्रीटमेंट डिक सॉल पाइक इज डायग्नोस्टिक टेस्ट डी फॉर डिक्स डी फॉर डायग्नोस्टिक टेस्ट एप्ले मैन्यूवर इज ट्रीटमेंट बेटा एप्ले मैन्यूवर हैज गॉट फाइव पोजीशन बेटा दिस इज फर्स्ट पोजीशन सिटिंग देन लाइंग डाउन देन टर्न द हेड देन टर्न द बॉडी एंड सिट डाउन अगेन बेटा फिफ्थ पोजीशन बेटा सो सिटिंग इज सिटिंग फाइव पोजीशन इफ द विजुअल क्वेश्चन then you should actually mark aplis maneuver beta this is a this is actually very possible visual question what is the name of this maneuver sitting position bring down the head dick stall pack maneuver it's a diagnostic test of bppv beta and the next image is five position sitting to sitting five position this is aplis maneuver is a treatment of bppv what is aplis maneuver doing it is sending the otoconia back from where they came that's why aplis maneuver is also called as particle repositioning maneuver apple maneuver is a treatment it's also called particle repositioning maneuver but what is particle particle is otoconia or otolith beta okay fine next question very very possible question in the paper beta in the upcoming inict particularly all are characteristic feature of superior semi circular canal dissection except very important topic superior canal dissection beta please see over here beta this is superior canal and there is a dissection over here beta what happens is there is a two window oval window round window now unfortunately through this window what is happening the sound is leaking into the skull beta sound is leaking to skull okay beta fine fine now this is called third window phenomenon patient has got hearing loss due to leakage of sound from this dissense because the sound is not being conducted properly this is called third window phenomenon because nature gave us two windows oval window round window and through this third window in the dissense area the sound is leaking to the skull and the sound is not being conducted properly beta the sound is cochlea is okay so cochlea is okay beta sound is leaking conduction is improper beta okay so this leakage of sound energy is called third window phenomenon very possible question beta third window phenomenon is a feature of superior canal dissense beta sensing or hearing loss on audiometry wrong it is not snhl it is conductive hearing loss this is the star question of the paper beta which is not applicable beta it is not snhl it is conductive hearing loss beta okay fine tullio's phenomenon yes vertigo on hearing loud sound beta vertigo on hearing loud sound doctor when i hear loud sound i my head starts spinning vertigo on hearing loud sound is called tullio's phenomenon beta okay What is the investigation which is done for this? Generally, we do the CT scan, HR CT. The second investigation is VAMP beta, vestibular evoked myogenic potential is also helpful to diagnose the superior canal dissection syndrome beta. Okay, the answer to this question is conductive hearing loss beta. It's it is uh, not SNHL beta. It is conductive hearing loss beta. So it is not SNHL. May I reiterate? It's conductive hearing loss. It is conductive hearing loss beta. Okay, fine. Now the the diagnostic investigation for this is hrct temporal bone and in that you see a dissense in this area beta can you see this this dissense beta in the superior canal you see a dissense in that area beta okay vamp is a very important question for the future paper beta vamp look at the name vestibular evoked myogenic potential beta let us make it simple beta v v means saccule beta what we do in this we stimulate the saccule with loud sound can you see over here and we record the contraction of which muscle sterno cleido mastoid muscle beta very simple name beta no no confusion vestibular evoked myogenic potential what is vestibule balance part saccule principle is look at the earphone we stimulate the saccule with loud sound and we record the activity of sterno cleido mastoid muscle 
okay so vestibular evoked myogenic potential what is myogenic sternum is stored muscle beta now west vamp test two things beta number one sacule number two it is inferior vestibular division of eighth nerve inferior vestibular division of eighth nerve beta inferior vestibular division of the eighth nerve beta very very popular question of inict and now need pg also beta so vamp is vestibular evoked myogenic potential we stimulate sacule with loud sound and we record the activity of sternocleidomastoid muscle. VAM tests two things, beta. number one, sacule, which it stimulates. And number two, it tests the nerve supply of sacule. What is the nerve supply of sacule? Inferior vestibular division of the eighth nerve. Beta. That's the need PG question, INSD question possible. Beta. Okay. Now, one new radiology question possible is ice cream cone appearance. You would have, would have heard of ice cream cone in multiple tumors like you know, MRI of the brain and all that. Ice cream cone appearance is actually a normal finding in HRCT of temporal bone when you take a cut at the level of malleus and incus beta. See, cuts, 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 cuts. Can you see beta over here? Everybody focus in this area, but their cut is at this level beta. Now, this is the head of the malleus, it's going to make the ice cream, and this is going to make the cone over there beta. Cone. This is going to make the ice cream. And the cone beta. Just look at this area beta. Can you see ice cream cone appearance? Let me let me enlarge it for you. Can you see this blue thing beta? This is the ice cream cone over there beta. The 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 ice cream part is what the malleus. The cone part is what incus beta. Okay. So basically beta, you are taking a cut at the level of incus malleus joint, and there you see the ice cream cone appearance. What is the message for you guys? Ice cream cone appearance is a normal finding in ENT in the HRCT of temporal bone when the cuts are taken at the level of incus malleus joint beta. Malleus makes the ice cream, incus makes the cone beta. Okay, ice cream cone appearance. Very good. I think this ice cream is better visible beta. This ice cream is better visible. Oh, okay, fine. Ice cream cone appearance. Okay, very good. Normal finding beta. Next question. Five-year-old patient, five-year-old patient present with hearing loss, and he is found to have pearly white mass behind intact tympanic membrane. Beta, pearly white mass behind intact tympanic membrane. This one, beta. This is a typical case of congenital cholestoma. Beta, can you see pearly white mass? Pearly white mass behind intact. The keyword is intact means the skin has not gone from outside. Beta, intact tympanic membrane means whatever happened happened in the embryological life. So the clue is. Pearly white mass behind intact tympanic membrane is a 100% clue for congenital cholestoma. Okay, the more common variety, this is not common, the more common variety is primary acquired cholestoma. This is a visual question of need PG beta. Whenever you see a pearly white mass in the upper part of the tympanic membrane or middle ear, please mark per primary acquired cholestoma. Cholestoma is skin in the middle ear, it's pearly white in color. It can be primary acquired, secondary acquired, congenital, or tertiary acquired also. But the primary acquired cholestoma is the majority of the cholestoma, most common type of cholestoma. How to identify it for the exam? If you see pearly white mass in the upper part of tympanic membrane or middle ear, please mark it primary acquired cholestoma beta. Okay, primary acquired cholestoma. This is already a visual question of the need PG beta. This patient will be having foul smelling blood stained ear discharge. Foul smelling blood stained ear discharge is a definite clue for the for the cholestoma beta. Okay, for the cholestoma is unsafe CSOM. Okay, unsafe CSOM is also called aticoenteral CSOM. Once again, presence of cholestoma is called unsafe CSOM, also called as aticoenteral CSOM. What is cholestoma? Skin in the middle ear. What is the color of cholestoma? Pearly white. If I see pearly white cholestoma in the upper part of the membrane, I'll mark it primary acquired cholestoma beta. Very good. Next one. Patient of right unsafe CSOM, cholestoma beta has presented with history of diplopia, pain behind the right eye beta. This is GERD, G-E-R-D, Gradinigo syndrome, is seen in petrocytus, ear discharge, retro pain, diplopia. So you will be doing HRCD temporal bone beta. This is a case of petrocytus, more commonly called Gradinigo syndrome. If you remember, Gradinigo syndrome has GERD. The GERD was the G for Gradinigo syndrome, E for ear discharge, R for retroabital pain, D for diplopia. Only thing is, he write that pain behind the right eye, diplopia. So, please understand, this much difference will be there in the exam. Better. So, the answer to this question is, HRCT temporal bone. Better. Why? 
I want to see at this area better. This is the Petrus apex better. Please see, this is the Petrus apex area better. This is the Peter, this is abscess is here better. So for that, I will do a CT scan and HRCD temporal bone better. Okay, very good. Okay, are you with me, everyone? We are at 41 question, 10 more to go. Okay, I hope you are alert. Everybody write in the chat box. Are you alert? Are you conscious, oriented, you know, well in the space and all that, everybody, okay? I hope you are not drowsy. Are you enjoying the process of revision or not? That's very important for me. I don't want to, I don't want to bug you, actually, to be very honest. I, I can understand the pressure on you, but I do just want to make sure that you revise the important points. Better. Okay, very good. Mohan, 22 year old. Male gives history of right-sided ear discharge, foul smell, occasionally blood stained for last six years, Peter. Please understand, whenever this question comes, foul smelling, blood stained, ear discharge, please think of unsafe CSOM, Peter. Okay, fine. Now, he also complained of hearing loss for last six years. Additional findings are always given in the question, don't bother. For last three days, this patient has developed fever and chills and headache, Peter. Whenever a patient of unsafe CSM gets headache, think of intracranial complication. Whenever a patient of CSOM develop headache, there is something in the brain, intracranial complication. And patient called pitting edema over mastoid. Pitting edema is a Gressinger sign. Pitting edema is Gressinger sign. I hope you remember. Pitting edema is Gressinger sign. Pitting edema is Gressinger sign. Gressinger sign. Pitting edema is Gressinger sign. Okay, fine. So, this is a case of sigmoid sinus thrombosis, also called as lateral sinus thrombosis. C is the answer. C. Sigmoid sinus thrombosis or lateral sinus thrombosis. Sigmoid sinus thrombosis or lateral sinus thrombosis. Okay, fine. Why it is not mastoiditis? My dear friends may be thinking, sir, why it is not mastoiditis? Mastoiditis will never have headache, will never have pitting edema. There is edema, but not pitting edema. Beta. So don't go for the choice, say, oh, I know, I know, it's pitting edema on the mastoid, I will mark it as mastoiditis. No, no, mastoiditis will never have headache. Beta. Headache in a patient of ear discharge, CSOM, should always indicate diagnosis towards the something in the brain. Beta. So sigmoid sinus thrombosis always has got a Grissinger sign, and that is actually pitting edema over the mastoid beta. Okay, I hope nobody will mark A beta, you will mark C over there. Now, everybody, let's go to next question beta. Now, patient has complained of right-sided hearing loss and left hear hearing is normal beta. First of all, right-side hearing is, is lost beta. Right-side hearing loss is there, right-side hearing loss is there and left ear hearing is normal. It means my right ear, my right ear, my right ear is the worse ear or the poor ear. My right ear is the poor ear. Beta. Poor ear. I'm going to right ear is the poor ear. Okay. Now, I hope you remember this chair table. Beta. Rene is negative in conductive hearing loss. Nobody forget that. Beta. Rene negative is conductive hearing loss. Beta. Rene negative means BC is better than AC. Beta. Okay. When it is conductive hearing loss, Weber is heard in the, in the, in the poor ear. Beta. So, two things are always should be consistent. Rene negative means conductive hearing loss. Weber heard in the poor ear means conductive hearing loss. Beta. Okay. Now, look at this question. Beta. Look at this question. What is happening over here? Patient says that the Rene is negative on right side. I start thinking, oh, it means that patient is suffering from right-sided conductive hearing loss. No hurries, but I want to spend time on this question. I am very highly suspecting this question in the either INICT or the NEED PG. Beta. Please understand, right side is the poor ear. Beta. Because patient says that right side hearing loss is there. I have to find out, is it conductive or SNHL? I do the Rene. Right side shows Rene negative. I think Rene negative means conductive hearing loss. If Rene is really negative, then Weber should have been heard in the right ear only. Beta. I repeat, Rene is negative in conductive hearing loss. Weber is heard in the poor ear in conductive hearing loss. Beta. Okay? If in this question, Rene is negative, I will start thinking it's conductive hearing loss. But if Rene is really negative, is really conductive hearing loss, then Weber should have been heard in the right ear only. But unfortunately, see what is happening. Weber ear, Weber is heard 
in the left ear better weber is heard in the left ear my dear friend weber is heard in the left ear oh rinne is negative look at the table beta rinne is negative my dear friends okay conductive hearing loss weber is heard in the better ear oh it's snhl can you make any sense out of this no sense na no? right now nonsense this is nonsense beta whenever it is nonsense beta whenever it is nonsense then it is false negative rinne and false negative rinne is a feature of unilateral severe snhl false negative rene is a feature of unilateral severe snhl my dear friends so this is a case of right severe snhl beta this is a case of right severe snhl b is the answer beta the answer is b my dear friends b is the answer beta is it clear beta everyone everybody are you clear beta about this question beta everybody are you clear about this question when rene is negative the weber should have been heard in the poor ear only whenever the question doesn't make any sense to you rene is negative i start thinking of conductive hearing loss but weber is heard in the better ear left ear i am 100% sure i have cracked the question it's a nonsense question when the question doesn't make sense in tuning folk then the answer is false negative rene and false negative rene is a feature of unilateral severe snhl it means patient is suffering from right sided right sided severe snhl beta okay fine severe snhl right severe snhl beta okay fine chalo guys please do revise false negative rene beta now a patient of left sided meniere's disease does not respond to conventional medical treatment his episodes are becoming more frequent and has developed severe sensory neural hearing loss beta on the left side identify the treatment being rendered to the patient in the given picture everybody please see in the screen please see what is happening over there is microvic assisted transtympanic gentamicin injection beta microvic assisted transtympanic gentamicin injection can you see microvix beta please see this is a microvix this can be a new visual question microvix in ent are used for transtympanic injection of drugs beta why you are injecting gentamicin beta meniere's is a unilateral disease beta fortunately meniere's involve one ear beta unilateral disease beta okay so you can damage one ear you can sacrifice one ear you know gentamicin ototoxic drug i can just i can just you know inject the gentamicin in the ear and destroy the inner ear and that will liberate the patient of the symptom beta fortunately is unilateral disease i am going to sacrifice one ear beta okay so what agent is being injected gentamicin what the delivery system is microvic we don't put needles beta microvic is used for transtympanic injection of drug and the, in this case we are doing the injection of gentamicin for the ablative treatment of of the meniere's disease beta now next abi auditory brain stem implant which is the following is not an indication of not not an indication of abi beta brain stem implant beta the typical indication is a beta A is the typical indication. Neurofibroma type two is the typical indication of the auditory brainstem implant. Why? ABI or brainstem implant is used when cochlear implant is not of any use, beta. When cochlear implant is of not use, no use, then you put the brainstem implant, beta. Because cochlea beyond that is eighth nerve, then brainstem, beta. Okay, brainstem contains the auditory pathway. Okay. Now, the second indication is congenital absence of eighth nerve, beta. Don't you think so? Eighth nerve is not working, or eighth nerve is absent. What is the typical feature of neurofibroma type two, beta? Look at this MRI, beta. Neurofibroma type two (NF2) is characterized by the presence of bilateral vestibular schwannomas, beta. Neurofibroma vestibular schwannoma is other name of acoustic neuroma. is mostly unilateral, except in the case of neurofibroma type two. So look at the MRI of of neurofibroma type 2 you can see both eighth nerve have got tumor one on one side is bigger other side is smaller now please understand beta cochlear implant the first prerequisite is normal eighth nerve but in this case eighth nerve is abnormal beta abnormal so both eighth nerve have got tumor so cochlear implant is of no use second indication is congenital absence of the eighth nerve third indication is remember michel's aplasia of cochlea cochlea there is no cochlea how can you book cochlear implant so where cochlear implant doesn't work brain stem implant works beta but can cochlear implant be done in dysplastic cochlea yes aims question insert question you can do the cochlear implant surgery for mondaines dysplasia of cochlea that does not need brain stem implant the answer to this question is c beta c 
द आंसर ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन इज सी बेटा सी सो वंस अगेन बेटा ब्रेन स्टम इम्प्लांट ब्रेन स्टम इम्प्लांट और ऑडिटरी ब्रेन स्टम इम्प्लांट द मोस्ट इंपोर्टेंट इंडिकेशन टू रिमेबर इज न्यूरोफेब्रोमा टाइप टू विच इज गॉट बायोलैट्रल एट नव ट्यूमर कॉल्ड बायोलैट्रल वेस्टुलर श्वानोमा द अदर रेयर इंडिकेशन आर कंजेंटल एप्स ऑफ एट नव और मिशल ए प्लेज ऑफ कॉकलिया हाउर in any dysplasia of cochlea like mondanese dysplasia of cochlea the cochlear implant surgery can be done beta can be done okay next question of need pg beta what is the site of implantation of the brain stem implant beta where you put the brain stem implant this is the electrode beta over there this is the electrode where you put the electrode beta you put the electrode where the the site of brain stem implant is Lateral recess of fourth ventricle. Speak with me, beta. Speak with me. What is the site of cochlear implant electrode placement? Scala tympani of cochlea. What is the site of implantation of brainstem implant? Is lateral recess of fourth ventricle. Once again, brainstem implant is placed in lateral recess of fourth ventricle, beta. Lateral recess of fourth ventricle. Am I clear, beta? Fine. Cochlear implant is placed in scala tympani of cochlea. This implant is placed in later recess of fourth ventricle. One more question, beta. New question. The brainstem implant stimulates which part of the auditory pathway? The answer is cochlear nucleus, beta. Cochlear nucleus. If they ask you where you put the brainstem implant electrode, lateral recess of fourth ventricle, what it stimulates is cochlear nucleus, beta. Okay, fine. Cochlear nucleus. Now, forty-fifth question. Thirty-year-old lady has bilateral hearing loss, beta. 30 year old lady has bilateral hearing loss has bilateral hearing loss beta which worsen during pregnancy beta this is the biggest clue this is a big pen or the which this is the worsen during pregnancy beta now this is the biggest clue of otosclerosis my dear friend this is otosclerosis beta otosclerosis this is otosclerosis this is otosclerosis beta lady you know the cochlear the otosclerosis is more common in young female in the child bearing age group it's a bilateral disease and the hearing loss worsens during pregnancy that is the definite hint of otosclerosis my dear friend otosclerosis beta this is the definite hint of hint of otosclerosis beta otos this is the definite hint of otosclerosis beta otosclerosis beta otosclerosis Okay, what type of impedance audiometry curve will be seen in otosclerosis? We all know that it will be AS curve, beta. It will be AS curve, my dear friend. It will be AS curve, my dear friend. AS curve, beta. AS curve. Am I clear, beta? AS curve. Okay, fine. So this question should not go wrong, beta. Any hearing loss worsening during pregnancy is definitely otosclerosis, and the type of otosclerosis, uh, the type of impedance audiometry curve or tympanometry curve is AS curve, beta. Forty-six question. Which of the following is not a boundary of facial recess, beta? Now please see on the screen. Facial recess, beta. This is the facial now. Labyrinth segment, horizontal segment, vertical segment. This vertical segment is also called mastro segment of facial nerve. From there, one nerve comes is caudal tympani. This star area is the facial recess, and this third boundary is here, beta. Okay. One boundary, second boundary. third boundary the star represent the facial recess beta the star is the facial recess beta okay now one boundary is very clear beta number one boundary is very clear number one boundary is vertical segment or mastro segment of the facial nerve the second boundary is caudal tympani nerve the upper boundary the yellow boundary the third boundary is short process of incus or fossa incudis beta or fossa incudis okay fine beta fine fine now let us see Which of the following is not a boundary of facial recess? I know short process incus, yes. Also called as fossa incudis. Horizontal segment of facial nerve, no. It's the vertical segment, beta. B is the answer, beta. Vertical segment is yes. Called nepenai, yes, beta. So the answer is B. Which of the following is not a boundary of facial recess? The answer is vertical segment is yes. Called nepenai is yes. Short process incus is yes. But horizontal segment is not. Which is the horizontal segment, beta? Please see. This is the horizontal segment or the tympanic segment this has got no relation with the facial recess what is the surgical significance of facial recess the answer is the facial recess is a surgical landmark for a surgery called posterior tympanotomy future question of your exam higher level surgical question facial recess is the surgical landmark for posterior tympanotomy please do remember it facial recess three boundaries is already asked question of the need pg beta 
फेशियल इज थ्री बाउंड्रीज आर नंबर वन वर्टिकल सेगमेंट ऑफ फेशियल नर्व नंबर टू कॉल्ड एम पेनाई नंबर थ्री शॉर्ट प्रोसेस ऑफ इंकस और फॉसा इनक्यूडेस व्हाट इज द सर्जिकल सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ फेशियल रिसेस फेशियल रिसेस इज द सर्जिकल लैंडमार्क फॉर पोस्टीरियर टिम्पेनोटमी दिस इज द पोस्टीरियर टिम्पेनोटमी विंडो बेटा दिस इज व्हाट बेटा दिस इज मैस्टर्ड कैविटी एंड दिस होल इन द मैस्टर्ड कैविटी इज कॉल्ड पोस्टीरियर टिम्पेनोटमी इफ यू सी एनी होल इन द फ्लोर ऑफ द मैस्टर्ड कैविटी इट्स पोस्टीरियर टिम्पेनोटमी बेटा Uh, may I remind you this visual question possible in higher level INICT question because AIMS has that specimens over there. If they show any kind of triangular hole or circular hole in the floor of the mastoid cavity in the surgical specimen, what is this indicating? The answer is posterior tympanotomy. Beta. Posterior tympanotomy. Okay, fine. Now, which of the following is not found on the medial wall of the middle ear? Beta. Medial wall of middle ear, four P, beta. ponticulus, pyramid, promontory, subiculum. Beta. I have remembered it in a very easy way, beta. Pyramid is our past, beta. Egyptian pyramid of the past is on the posterior wall, beta. Pyramid represents our past. It's on the posterior wall, my dear friends, beta. Pyramid is on the posterior wall, beta. Okay. Now, what is ponticulus and what is subiculum, beta? Now, please understand the ponticulus, the ponticulus, and subiculum are two bony spicules, beta. Spicules. How to remember, beta? Ponticulus is from promontory to pyramid. Ponticulus is from promontory to pyramid. Subiculum separates. As for subiculum, as for separates, oval window and round window. Subiculum, as for subiculum, as for separates, oval window and round window. Then you ask me, Raji, what is promontory then? Promontory, promontory is the projection of basal turn of cochlea. On medial wall of middle ear, basal turn of cochlea on medial wall of middle ear. Beta, there are four P's to be revised. Beta, okay. The promontory is the projection of basal turn of cochlea on the medial wall of middle ear. Beta, on the medial wall of middle ear. On the medial wall of middle ear. Beta, okay. Now let me show you this picture. Beta, everybody, look at this. This picture is possible in INICT. Beta. Whenever you get this kind of picture in the in the exam, please understand first of all, the floor of the picture is the medial wall of middle ear. I'm sorry to make so dirty, but this is the way you have to remember in the exam, beta. The floor of the picture, beta, my dear friends, the floor of the picture is the medial wall of middle ear, beta. Okay, everybody, please remember like this, beta, very clearly. The floor of the picture is medial wall of middle ear, so this is the medial wall of everything is medial wall of middle ear beta okay if this is medial wall of middle ear then then where is the posterior wall of middle ear beta the posterior wall of middle ear is this wall beta this is the posterior wall of middle ear posterior wall can you see posterior wall has a projection called pyramid beta this yellow arrow indicates pyramid 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 is a projection of the posterior wall of the middle ear from pyramid which muscle comes out stapedius Stapedius attached to which ossicle? Stapes. Okay, once again, please see. The blue line represents the posterior wall. On the posterior wall, there is a projection called pyramid. From pyramid, one muscle is coming out called stapedius, and that attaches to stapes. Beta. Now, this is what, beta? Incus. This is which joint? Incudostapedial joint. Incudostapedial joint, beta. If this is stapes, beta, then this area has to be oval window, beta. Why? Oval window is attached at basal. Oh, 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 the stapes foot plate attached at oval window, round window. Stapes foot plate attached at oval window, beta. Now let me mark it over here, beta. Everybody, I know now this is the oval window area because stapes is attached at the oval window. If this oval window, this is round window, beta. Round window got nothing. A membrane called round window membrane, beta. Okay, am I clear, beta? Now this is promontory, beta. This bulge is called promontory. I hope you remember this whole floor of the picture is the medial wall of middle ear. What is promontory? Promontory is the promontory is the projection of basal turn of cochlea on the medial wall of middle ear. This is what beta. This is pyramid. This yellow arrow is what beta pyramid. I hope you remember this is ponticulus beta. Ponticulus is from promontory to pyramid beta. Can you see this pont ponticulus beta? Ponticulus is from promontory to pyramid beta. Pyramid. Okay. The, if this is ponticulus, then this is subiculum. Beta. Subiculum separates oval window from round window. Beta. This is called subiculum. Beta. Subiculum. 
subiculum. Okay. The area between the two, hidden area between the two, between upper boundary, boundary ponticulus, lower boundary subiculum. This area is called sinus tympani. You must have heard this word. Sinus tympani is between the ponticulus above and subiculum below. Beta. Try to take a screenshot and remember it. Beta. There may be a lot of question on the middle ear anatomy like that. Beta, but they are doable. They are doable. Beta. Okay. Let me remove the markings and you see yourself. Okay. Okay, but uh, fine. Can you see ponticulus? Can you see subiculum? Can you see sinus tympani? And I hope you know now, sinus tympani is the area between the ponticulus and subiculum. Beta. Above is ponticulus, subiculum. And what is the surgical significance of sinus tympani? Sinus tympani is a hidden area between ponticulus and subiculum. So, this is the most common site of residual cholestoma after mastoid surgery. Beta. Once again, the question, sinus tympani is hidden area between ponticulus and subiculum. Hence, it is the most common site of residual cholestoma after mastoid surgery. Beta. Please tell me, are you clear about the medial wall or middle ear? Beta? Can you identify this? Everybody revise with me. What is this yellow arrow indicating? Everybody, what is this yellow arrow indicating? Pyramid. Pyramid, beta. everybody. What is this muscle? Stapedius muscle. What is this ossicle? Stapes ossicle, beta. What is this ossicle? Incus. What is this joint? Incudostapedial joint. What is this window? Oval window. What is this projection called? Promontory. What is this window? Round window. What is this project? This spicule called? Ponticulus is from promontory to pyramid. What is this spicule called? Subiculum. What is this area called? Sinus tympani. Are you clear about it? Yes or no? Tell me. Are you clear about it, Bita? Yes or no? In the chat box. Yes or no? Is this doable? Can you find out there is a oval window, round window, incus? Okay. Very good, Bita. Wonderful. Amazing. 48th question, Bita. A congenitally deaf child with bilateral profound SNHL. BC. The child is deaf since birth, my dear friends. Deaf since birth. Bilateral profound SNHL. Means patient is deaf, beta. Deaf. Okay. Radiological evaluation done. Cochlea and brain. MRI CT done. Normal 8 nerve is proven on both sides, beta. Okay. What is the best method of hearing rehabilitation in this case? Of course, cochlear implant, beta. Cochlear implant is indicated for bilateral profound hearing loss. Bilateral profound hearing loss, beta, and the ideal age is one year of surgery. Before surgery, you should be demonstrating eighth nerve is normal. This is a exact indication profile of the of the cochlear implant. The patient should be having bilateral profound SNHL. Patient should be un undergoing MRI CT to prove eighth nerve is normal, beta. Okay, perfect. Cochlear implant. Forty ninth question. Seventy five year old diabetic patient present with severe pain in the ear and facial palsy. Examination shows granulation in the exonotic canal. The possible diagnosis is malignant or titus externa. Beta. Guys, ENT diabetes has two questions. Beta. Old diabetic ear question is 100% malignant or titus externa. Old diabetic patient ear question is malignant or titus externa. Beta. Okay. And you know what is the causative organism? Is pseudomonas. Beta. Pseudomonas. And facial nerve is very commonly involved in this disease. That's why facial palsy is there. And which is the first test you do in this patient is technetium bone scan. Beta. Technetium bone scan, it's a basically it's a skull-based osteomyelitis. And what is the follow-up scan is? Is the gallium bone scan. The drug of choices, the drug of choice is third generation cephalosporin because pseudomonas is the culprit over there. Beta. ENT has got two questions of diabetes, beta. Old diabetic ear question, the answer is malignant or titus externa. Young diabetic nose question is mucormycosis. I told you, mucormycosis is more common in young diabetic patient with ketoacidosis profile over there. Okay. Now, the last question. Beta. A patient have got left aticoantral CSM means unsafe CSM. Beta. Okay. With history of headache, vomiting, conversion. I told you, moment you see headache, Think of intracranial complication, beta. CSOM patient with headache, think of some brain problem. The CT scan is given in the picture and I think CT scan is very, very obvious. This is a case of autogenic brain abscess in the temporal lobe, beta. CT scan shows a beautiful, well uh, encircled abscess in the temporal bone. The treatment is not ENT surgery. This is beyond ENT. 
this is a neurosurgery domain the treatment is neurosurgical treatment beta this is a case of autogenic brain abscess and the patient should be referred to neurosurgery for the for the appropriate management beta okay these were the few question before we finish i want to show you a couple of you know pictures more if they ever show you the mastoid cavity specimen mastoid cavity specimen and if they show you a hole in the floor is posterior tympanotomy window beta but if they show you a bulge like this beta if they mark a bulge like this in the floor of the mastoid cavity then this is lateral semi circular canal bulge beta this is lateral semi circular canal bulge am i clear beta so i have got two specimens beta in mind that mastoid cavity in the floor if they show a hole or window it's posterior tympanotomy window but if they mark at a bulge in the floor of mastoid cavity this bulge indicates the lateral semi circular canal bulge beta okay one more anatomy question if they point an instrument at the posterior surface of the petrous part of temporal bone this is petrous part of temporal bone na beta okay if they point an instrument at the posterior surface of the petrous part of temporal bone then it is pointing towards the internal auditory canal also called as internal auditory meatus visual question beta if they point a point an instrument at the posterior surface of the petrous part of the temporal bone then it has to be the internal auditory canal or internal auditory meatus beta okay that's all beta from my side this is this is what i wanted to convey to you for a quick revision of the salient part of your notes beta of your notes it's not ent ent is a very vast thing but i just wanted to do some quick revision of the subject highlighting the important point of your notes so that in in two hours span you just get you know some idea about okay quick revision of the ent what kind of questions can come what are important topics and all that okay this is my you know telegram channel link also you can be there if you have post if you have any question any comments to make anything please share these comments in the telegram channel it will be really wonderful to respond to your queries i hope you enjoyed the session i hope you learned from the session i hope you revised with me i hope these these 2 hours were of you know some some value to you guys and my only wish is that may you be your best in the remaining days to come and you don't compare yourself with anyone else you start you know focusing on your own performance you don't really you know look this way or that way that she is doing this or he is doing this what i am doing is the only concern for for myself because i have a different journey from other people other people may be good in other subjects i may be good in other subjects but i have a different reason why i could not study that much but whatever situation may be in the remaining days i will put my best foot forward beta my only philosophy is that you know what i am not i am not really convinced with this idea that i need to be the best out of the crowd but i i can just do one thing i can do my level best without thinking about what other people are doing let's leave the rest to god beta because this fear will always be running parallel in your mind what if i don't score good rank what will happen and all that this is a universal parallel thought goes on in your mind don't run away from that fold your hands pray to him i'm doing my hard work you please bless my hard work that's all that's all we can do we cannot predict our result but we can definitely definitely you know do our best hard work and may you bless may you be blessed with the so much of force and energy in the remaining days that you keep on doing hard work we will have one more session for the neat pg before it comes but this is for the inicit and inicit just few days you know away and you know but in between we'll keep another session we we'll do the clinical scenarios or some images some audiograms and all that in one day over there so thank you very much bachay god bless take good food after that study well thank you very much thanks a lot